I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlamagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are joined today by the pod father. That's right. You haven't seen him in forever because he's scared of everything. Yeah. True. He's scared of every disease walking. <laughs> he's scared of everything he sees on the news. So he stays home. Where's that monkey pox vaccine for me? Man? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Morrow is here. Chris Morrow has a uh, project dropping today. Yup. Uh, called Summer of 85. Oh, shit. Uh, it's coming out on SBH Productions. That's uh, me and Kevin Hart's company at Audible. Chris, could you tell us what uh, some of 85 is about? Well, man, that's a long question. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Well, it's a podcast. We have, yeah, we got you time, start man. With it? Also, okay, we want to well, check in with you, right, too. Right, I want right, to, like, right. see what's up. Right, How right, many right. times you get COVID? You're right. I just got it. Fourth of July weekend for the first time. Hold on, somebody do the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this, guy, <laughs> this guy's crazy. Bro. Do the days. This guy's absolutely crazy, bro. <laughs> what do you? Are we mean? good? Is yeah, it two weeks? I've been, I've been testing. I'm negative now. Okay, you're yeah, good. Yeah. All right, thank don't God. Worry. I'm very much on top of it. Was it COVID? COVID or like you it's know? It's kicking my ass a little bit. I'll be honest. Really? Yeah. Really? You're gonna get long COVID for yeah, sure. Yeah, you knew that was. A, yeah, like, <laughs> gonna, that was the easiest bet of 2022. You got long limes. I got long limes. I got long COVID. Um. Kind of the same thing at the end of the day. So. Was it the first time you got it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I've been, I mean, I, I really haven't gone out that much over the last two and a half years. Wait, so. really? Ducking yeah. the feds, bro. No. You just kind of said, I'm not going to leave the house? No, I mean, I go out, but like, I don't dine indoors. I don't go to recording studio, you know, like yeah. I really like played it safe. And um, because of your medical condition. I mean, I don't want to jinx myself and, you know, how much of this shit is psychological, you never know. But yeah. in my mind, I was like, when I get it, it's going to fuck me up and it's, it's fucking me up. So It did? Like, it bad? Like, it had you down? There? I mean, I'm here, but I don't feel right. I can't really explain. Really? But was this worth two and a half years of not <laughs> nope. going outside to have, like, the fucking sniffles? No, nah, it was worse than sniffles. I was, I was in bed for, like, eight or nine days. Oh, really? Yeah. You vaxxed, though, right? Yeah, vaxxed. Boosted. I didn't get the second boost. I'm old enough that I'm eligible for the second booster, but I didn't get it. Now this, I'm gonna get it. At this point, it feels like we do need to do some isolation, yo. Because either either you isolate or you just say fuck it because it's too much shit going on. Man. What you mean? What you mean? What you you mean? got monkeypox. I saw some other new virus in Ghana that they say is like 88 percent fatal and super contagious. You didn't see that one? Mm. And it's just like. Ah. You know what I, I mean? can't think about all these things, bro. <laughs> exactly. You, we're not, we're not made to away. think about all this shit. There's like so many problems in the world. I think that I, I was talking to buddy about this, but like, <laughs> I wonder what's more healthy in this world mm. to like think about and talk about all the problems, but do nothing or ignore them. I'm jealous of the people who said, fuck it. I'm living my life and did their thing. I mean, I can't even knock them. I, you know, it's not my personal path, but like, those people have had a much better last two and a half years than I have. I, I wonder just because because I know people that will talk about the problems but not do anything about them. Yeah, because you can't. But here's the thing. You can't. Because you can't. So I'm like, well, if you know you're not yeah. going to do nothing, yeah. well, don't talk about it. Like, what's what's more pure? Yeah. I'm going to ignore it and act like it's not happening. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to ignore it. It's not, it's not happening, bro. I truly understand the term ignorance is bliss now. I get it. Ignorance is bliss is because if you don't know what the fuck is going on in the world, if you're not watching the news, if you don't know anything about all these life is going, great, life is great. You know? phenomenal. <laughs> like I love when you talk to people that uh, when you tell them about like the main headlines of the day, they were like, "What? The Wait, fuck what, what? Yeah, Twitter. I still don't know who Kristen Cinnamon is. I, I really? have no clue. She didn't pop on my radar. I'll never listen to her. That's I'll never to Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know who she is. Really? Yeah, I don't know who the guy who's like keep uh, who keeps fucking up the Senate. What's the guy's Joe name? Manchin. Don't know him. Big Joe Manchin. Don't want to know. West Virginia. Don't want to know either. <laughs> Don't want to know. Uh, I'm like proud not knowing senators. You know, I know AOC. I know not Bernie. A senator, though. What? She's a congresswoman. She's a congresswoman. Oh, it's a girl? AOC? Joe Manchin. Oh, no. Joe Manchin's a guy. Kristen Sinema was a, a woman. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't want to misgender them. Don't know. <laughs> I don't really. I really don't. I don't know what they identify as. But I'm pretty sure. From our, from our era. Yeah. You born in the 1900s? Yeah. The man, Chris that, the that's facts. That's yes, facts. Yes, 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 yes. And in any era, like generally, like if you assume, <laughs> if you assume gender, you're usually right. You are usually right. Right. Like it's one of those things yeah, like, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're right until they tell you otherwise. Like when you assume someone's black, you're usually right. 
Like yeah, if I look I, at yeah, you and I'm like, yo, are you black? You're like, exactly. yep. Like you don't know my pronoun is them. I mean this. Yeah. My pronoun is this. You're this. My this, pronoun what? is this. My wife's pronoun is that. You don't know that until we tell you. Ah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. She's that. That's what's up, man. Respect that's me, bro. Thank yo, you. Yo, that's Thank fire. You. Thank you. That's that's really cool. What do you guys identify as a Dr. Seuss book? <laughs> <laughs> Our kids are things. I'm, I'm this. She's that. Those are the things. <laughs> yo, does, Dr. Seuss was at his time, bro. He was, he didn't man. Have these books. He was. He was. He was to Dr. Seuss. But, you know, it's interesting, right? Because with all of the things going on in the world, people have found a way to be highly pissed off at Rosetta, a Sesame Street character that I never even fucking heard about until this week. I didn't I didn't know about Rosetta. Really? Yeah. Well, at Sesame Place, who I'm sure Chris has been several times, being a Philly native. Oh, Great. I know about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, now I do know about this. Like Sesame Place has been uh accused of discrimination because like, you know, people in these costumes be ignoring black kids. Always? I, I mean, from the here's the thing about the internet. Mm-hmm. I can put together any narrative. Because if there's one video, give me three more, now there's an issue. Facts. <laughs> like, you Facts. give me three more. If I can put together three videos of Elmo and Rosita and Big Bird ignoring black kids, now Sesame Place got a problem. You know? I need to see these videos because I saw the one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where they like waved and then like were like, nah. You got it? Oh, man, one kid was apparently slapped. That's not ignoring. That's wild. He's doing too much. That's wild. But that's not ignoring. That's what that was. Now, that, now that was wild. That, me and him yeah. would have had to fight. You ain't going to do that to my kid like that now. I didn't see a smack. Come on. Now, that's it. That's, that's what that guy did to Rudy Giuliani and the goddamn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Hold man. on, hold on, hold on. Now they just, now they just go for it. Yeah, 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 it wasn't a slap. It was nah, more he like slapped a, her. He slapped yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, slapped yeah, the was, girl. That's it was wrong. like a mush, like a. But if you ever needed confirmation that Bert and Ernie are gay, <laughs> I think we <laughs> that, got was it. That, yeah, yeah. that was a sassy slap. That was. That was a sassy slap. That was a sassy slap. Here's the thing that's gonna be, I, I think, funny about this: when those hoods come off, and it's black women. <laughs> Well, that, that's what I thought, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, how do you know yeah, yeah, they yeah, were white? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's three black chicks that are very quiet right now. <laughs> Wait for this whole thing to blow over. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We got to be very careful. Let's figure out who's under these masks <laughs> before we rally the troops, yo. I'm serious. I see that they're doing protests and they're calling no. for boycotts and they talking to the mom and the son, <laughs> the child. Let's make sure we know who's under these masks. Before we go all in, yo. I can't, I'm serious, man. I'm serious, yo. That could be a black woman under there. It could be a Latino woman. We don't know yet. We're just assuming there's a white racist underneath those costumes. The costumes. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. I also say, too, if that was the, K- the KKK, man, if the KKK... Found a new mask? Yes. Whoa. Wouldn't you at this point, though? Come on, the shit they got now is a little too obvious. Oh my god, that's brilliant! <laughs> appeal to younger demo. Yeah, too. Appeal yes, to younger demo. this is how. <laughs> Whoa, the, the, the cone head's a little too obvious. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? It tells your story before you walk in the room. Oh like, my god, this is perfect. This is the new way to get your racism off. Yes, dude. That's a great idea. This is what the KKK oh, should do. Dress up like a Latino Sesame Street character. Yeah. <laughs> She's Latino. I never heard of her. Rosita? Never heard of Rosita. Y'all heard of Rosita? Never. Never heard of Rosita. I'm old school. Though. I know big. I know that person on the fucking logo. Big Bird. Big Bird. I know Snuffleupagus. I know Oscar the Grouch. Yep, yep. I need, I need to know Sesame Street. Eeyore? Place. No. Elmo? What's, Elmo. What's Elmo's Eeyore? One. Elmo's one. Oh, he always wanted to pull. God damn it. Uh, and what is Sesame Place? Is that like, did they gentrify Sesame Street? Like, what is Sesame what do you, Place? What do you mean? What do you, oh, it's not Sesame Street <laughs> anymore? No, it's Sesame Place. It's oh, like a, it's, it's like, like Disneyland. It's like a fake Disney. Oh. Outside of Philly, yeah. Oh, God, 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 okay. God, 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 So God, I got to assume, I mean, I haven't been there in years. I got to assume, like, at least half of the people who show up there are black, right? Like, I've never so. thought of it as like a white kind of. Space. I don't yeah. Know. Wait. What at Sesame Street? 
Sesame white people don't like, watch Sesame Street? No, I'm saying oh. like it's it's in Philly. Like I got to assume it's a pretty diverse spot. Yeah, is what I would always. So you're saying that they had enough of them black kids? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, <laughs> no, just, like it. just the opposite. Actually, I'm like you'd, you'd be working hard if you were trying to ignore every black kid. In oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he's just looking at it as kids, possibly. Hmm. Mm. I don't know, man. I think it's more fun if the story's racist. But once again, yeah. we have to find out who's under the mask. And then it's going to ruin it all. This is what always happens. It's so, isn't it more fun to think they're UFOs, not like drones from China? There are you. Why are you so against extraterrestrials, bro? I want them. I oh. enjoy that. I think it's more fun than we think that. Yeah. But we know what it is. I don't. I'm not giving the Chinese that much credit. Come on. Because oh, Chris, Chris here, because Chris here, because Chris here. You I got to see if he knows. <laughs> I, actually, I, 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 got, I threw it out there. I threw it out there, and I wanted to see if his ears perked up a little bit like, uh, he's on to something. <laughs> I did. I did. I'll confess to after you brought it up on another episode, I Googled it. And? Didn't find that much. I got to be honest. Of course, they Damn control the yeah. internet. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, hmm, what's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they control the internet, bro. They control it. They make your phone. They make your phone not able to search it. Just oh, look, I'm man. telling you. So listen, is monkeypox an STD? Say again? Is monkeypox an STD? I mean, it depends who you're fucking, but... Because Dr. Fauci said that the majority of the spread is men that have sex with men. I don't understand why he would say that if it's not an STD. That's the same AIDS shit. I think we spoke about this before, but like, yeah. this is how you know these guys are full of fucking shit. Because the second the disease comes around, it's like, it's those gays fucking... And then 20 years later, they're just like, oh, no, it was a guy like in the forest doing weird shit with monkeys. Can we hear the clip? Because he sounds so Brooklyn on this shit. Oh, uh, yeah. He went in. Like, listen. I think he even said no homo. He goes, no homo. Hey, <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you well, if you look at the numbers, the overwhelming proportion of people who have been infected are men who have sex with men. That's how you but know it is not exclusive He's not even to that the demographic He's group. It is an infection that is spread by close physical contact, hey. skin to skin to contact. Yuck. That is we A to the yuck. Increasing Ain't nobody need to know what the fuck United that is. Like, we got it, bro. We get it. We get what you said they have sex, bro. Now I gotta imagine just ball slapping. Do you know what I mean? We got it, like, it, <laughs> you know I mean? got just... it when you said men having sex yo, with men. Yo, Fauci is A, yo. What do you mean close yo, skin to skin contact, Yo, what is this bro? guy crazy? <laughs> you think they're going raw? What do you say? Close dick to cheek contact. Right? Come on, dude. Super A yo, Fauci. You're from New York. You should know better. Pause. But he's a doctor. Doctors can't just be like men having sex yo, with men, right? Doctors are being a doctor's wild A yo. Homosexual nah. sex, though. So, homosexual nah. activity. If you're uh, a doctor, you're you're mostly gay. Explain. <laughs> you stud your studying dicks all goddamn day. You know what I mean? Like, why are you studying this? Why are you studying this disease so damn close? Well, how close is the skin to skin contact? There's only one way to find out. You know what I mean? Super A yo. Like, uh, choose a different career path. Doctor stands for dick rider. But listen, <laughs> but listen, listen, Chris. Yes. Why are they saying it's don't man to man? To Why are they saying? <laughs> but listen, but listen, uh, Chris. <laughs> Why they say man to man sex like that if it's they not an STD? I think I'm I'm taking a bit of a leap here, but I think it's because it's literally the skin rubbing against each other, how it gets you know uh, passed along rather than actual intercourse. But like we, I think with how AIDS, do you think we have sex? Yeah, when we exactly. have sex with women, that skin is rubbing, bro. So I think eventually, once it spreads enough, then, then that's how goes. everybody else yeah, gets it too. I don't like him singling out gay people. That's I think that that's homophobic. Like that. Yeah, I don't. I didn't get it, especially if it's not an STD. What's the point? Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Fuck, fuck Fauci, man. Did you hear about the girl who wanted to sue because she had a bad first date? Wait, what? Come on, Taylor, pull it up. Wait, for wait, show. Wait, what do you mean? Pull it up for what show. Do you mean? <laughs> pull it up for shows. You got the audio. Wait. She wanted to sue because why? of a bad first date. But bro. why? What this happened? Is, watch, watch, watch. She, she, a Michigan woman, she, uh, she went viral. She had a nine minute Zoom court appearance. She's suing a man for $10,000 for intentional affliction of emotional distress. She claims the man intentionally hurt her feelings when he did not show up and left her on her deceased mother's birthday. Her mother had oh. just passed away. She accused the man of committing perjury and documents she presented to the court. 
The judge tried many times to explain to her that perjury can only occur under, under oath in a wow. courtroom. Wow, wow. She was not trying to hear it. She swore up and down. She understood the definition of perjury. Please do not insult my intelligence. Do not do that. Do not insult my intelligence as if I do not understand what the word perjury means. If it's a criminal offense, then it's a criminal fucking offense. Bro, I love this girl, bro. Let me see it. I thought this was just going to be thrown out. Uh, it was, we had a date, one date and nothing else after that. And now I'm being sued for $10,000. I think it's a waste of your time. That letter, in that letter, he, he lied. That's what brought forth the perjury. It was never perjury in the beginning. It was per perjury after his response. You can't add another count because you don't like or you disagree with what is in his answer. If he responds and his response is a lie, it's perjury. First of all, do you understand what perjury is? Perjury is a statement, a, a false statement made under oath. He, you don't understand. He, what? He, it's a false he statement a made under he oath. Under oath. That stated a what did he testify to something that he lied about? It's he, a, statement made, a he, false statement made under oath. Bottom line is you said it's a criminal offense, so I will send it to circuit court. Are we done here? You don't know anything. But you're the plaintiff. You have, wait a minute. You are the plaintiff. Are we done here? You have to are lay out here? your allegations properly. Are we done here? No, we're not. Exactly what perjury no, means. we're not. Do not insult my intelligence. Tell her, tell her, tell her. None of this shit makes sense. Yeah, I, gotta I, be honest. I, I don't, I don't yeah. get it. And I can totally see how that brother is confused because all he did was go out on a date, mm -hmm. a date he decided that he didn't want to show up to for whatever reason. Yeah. Is that not a man's prerogative? He ghosted her or something? What is that called? Uh, ghosted. Ghosted, yeah. yeah. He ghosted her. Can I not do that? Can I not show up? And then honestly, he probably didn't want to deal with it. He like, oh, he was like, man, I do want to go out with her. But her mom just died. Mm. I don't want to be that dude. I don't want to be the grief counselor. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, that could be yeah, yeah, yeah. that could be very emotionally draining, draining, especially if it's just a date. It's one thing if you and the girl had been kicking it before. Yeah. You know, y'all already was in a relationship with a first date. No, uh, no, 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 no. If you had a first date schedule with somebody and it was like, yo, my mom just died, but I still want to go out. Would you do it? Probably because the head is going to be crazy. This guy. <laughs> this guy. The head this is going to be crazy. Wow. This, <laughs> nah, nah. This the head guy. is going to be crazy, this bro. Guy. Now's not the time to be a motherfucker show. <laughs> Yo, wow. Yo, this guy <laughs> wow. You don't think the head this, would be crazy? I don't have no idea, that bro. That grieving sweet... Jesus Christ. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What you never had grieving mouth? Oh, she's a grief gobbler? <laughs> <laughs> This guy is crazy. Yo, this just, guy is crazy. Saying, it's this possible. Guy is head wild. is crazy. The head is crazy, dude. For real. That's true. That's a fact. Chris? 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 Would you like to comment on this? Would you go? Uh, I don't have, you know, I'm so far removed from this sort of situation. I know, right? I don't know what the fuck a But hypothetically, is. hypothetically saying, if you were on a date with a girl who's, whose I, I, parent just died, I can't even hypothetical. Envy asked me this shit the other day. I said, bro, don't ask me no stupid ass questions. Wait, like really? Yeah, well, the first, I've been with the same woman for 24 years. What is the first date? Yeah, first, uh, uh, how do we make it more um, relatable for you? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Nope. I don't want to relate. <laughs> I do not. Want to relate at all? I'm just saying the the if you if you have a grieving gobbler trying oh, to give one of them man. them sweet sucks. The, you know. By the way, yeah, there's some you know what's so funny you say that that uh, it makes it makes them feel better actually. Head is an oral fixation. It is that's why people smoke cigarettes or like people do the chew sticks yep. or whatever else. Yep. So some and what's better that she yeah. that she goes out drinking and has alcohol at night, right? Be depressed. At least she's doing something that makes her happy. Makes, right? And it makes someone else happy. She's given. There's altruism to it. I think that's actually the best way to get over the loss of life. It's just gobbling Dude, up. That's wild, Joe. That Because the way you're describing it, somebody might call one of these places and request that. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you call like counselor. a brothel yeah. or something. Like, yo, you got yeah. anybody who's Who's Mom dick is died? there? <laughs> oh, you go the other way. I, I, I want the one whose mom died. You know anybody whose mom just died? Like, I'm, you know, look at... Because what you said is true. Some people get off on making somebody else happy. Yes. So even... Especially when they're down. That's right. Yeah. It's like drugs, right? It's like, yo, that one yeah. hit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then you, you forget everything for the moment. Yes. For the moment. Yes. You know what I mean? But then it like, Still got to deal with reality at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I I don't know why the young lady's suing. I really don't. What is this, Taylor? Like just seeing the wedding crashes. 
uh, when they crash the funeral because the chicks are horny. Yes. No. Yes. You ever seen this? No, I never seen wedding crashes, yo. I thought this was Dumb and Dumber. He not even invited to the funeral. <laughs> that's Will Ferrell? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dang, that's 2005. See, you could get that off in 2005. Hell yeah. How motherfuckers would be offended and shit. You know what I mean? It'll be people acting like they're triggered by this scene at wedding crash on, on wedding crashes. Did somebody get it in? Oh, yeah. Who, Will? Of course, bro. Wow. Yeah, no, nah, this movie's Man. fine. I mean, Will, listen, Will Ferrell had a streak, bro. Yeah, Will Ferrell a, had like, what, a, a seven movie streak? Uh, he was just running. It was, uh, what is it? Uh, brothers, Step Brothers was Step brothers. crazy. Anchorman. Anchorman. Anchorman, crazy. Yeah. Wedding Crashers, crazy. Yeah. Well, he just did a quick scene in that. But like, I wonder who wrote Elf. Who, apparently, Elf. is amazing. Who wrote that shit? Like, I wonder who was. I wonder who was writing all of that stuff at the time. Mm, I think, and I don't want to take away from the writer, but I also think like Will is the type of guy that you know. There's going to be certain words on the page, mm -hmm. and then there's going to be he's going to bring them to life. Yeah, and like also Will's gonna improv and he's gonna, you know, have yeah. his thing. So it's like you just give him a shell. This is what I assume. I don't know. You give him a shell and then let him play within that and you're just gonna get the most. Yeah. Yeah, I mean physical comedy is a big part of his. Oh yeah, and he's just great. Keep us uh, posted on that Michigan trial. I'd like to see what happened. Uh to sending healing energy to the uh the, Yo, Kevin Gates the is lady. the man. Can we get Kevin Gates on the podcast? Kevin Gates. <laughs> well, yeah, I, Kevin. I think he's the man. He's very honest. Yeah. You know, and there's certain things Kevin says, and I believe him. Like when Kevin says he can start a car with his bare hands, <laughs> I have no reason not to believe sure. Kevin Gates because of the things that I know I can do. You know what I mean? Yeah, breathe underwater. Breathe underwater, levitation. Wolf. Um, turn, yeah, turning into a werewolf. Like there's just certain things. What did, what did he say that it was something you said? Oh, please play this. Please, please play this, bro. Now, I have had some disappointments. I done had to put my finger down there and put it up under their nose. You wanted me to eat this? <laughs> smell it. You don't smell this? So I done had some disappointments. I ain't gonna oh lie. Oh, my God. I you, have. You do that? What? Oh, my God. So I tell what God, God, God I, I tell what God <laughs> love. The truth. Because some women haven't been trained properly how to clean themselves. They don't know what a vaginal wall cleaning is. Damn. They don't know they're not supposed to use tampon. They Damn. don't know that... The dead uterus land to get stuck around their walls Dang. and cause odor. They don't know that. Dang. Don't know soap supposed to go on your pussy. Bitch, when I bathe you, this is the cleanest you're going to ever feel in your life. Okay, you man. You behind your ears, bitch. Your mom ain't teach you how to do that because she was busy working on some shit. I don't know. Kevin Gates sounded like you're in the Supreme Court. I, I love Let me you know how your body works, Please. God damn it. I'm so not sorry. Okay? Y'all women don't nice. know that your uteruses I mean, get stuck I mean, around, I whatever he said, yeah. get stuck around, yeah. bro. She was <laughs> feeling that right there. I'm not going to lie. I'm just that was a, some good flirting. I'm upset that, that nobody started the goddamn, you want me to eat this challenge? <laughs> y'all got all these other silly ass challenges going on. Yeah. Why y'all ain't doing that on TikTok? Are you still eating? What? Me? Yeah. Hell yeah. Nah, that's that's what's all saying. I got. So <laughs> <laughs> like, what you mean I'm 44? I don't have much after that show. I told y'all before the show started, I had to get the goddamn whole B12 IV yesterday, man. Right, right. Get the energy up. Bro. Yeah. Like, shit. You don't eat no more? No, nah, of course. Oh. <laughs> Chris been riding longer than all. You're not eating, Chris? Of course. Oh, what else we got? I'm paranoid about uh, throat cancer, though. What? Yeah, that's right. It's, what? It's, it's, What's it's his a name? Big thing. What? What's his name? Michael uh, Douglas. Michael Douglas. Yeah. Oh, because of the HPV. Put that yeah. shit on his wife. That was foul, bro. He got throat cancer and he was like, it was from eating this fucking asshole's pussy. No. Yeah. And his wife HPV? is famous. Who's his wife? Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Catherine Zeta Jones, man. Because she had HPV? Yeah. I guess. Wow. If, if a woman has HPV, a man's chances of getting throat cancer goes way way up. wow but also men get hpv too so it's got to be yeah right, back to either or right? if a woman has hpv a man's chances of blaming his throat cancer on her go way up that's hard skyrocket yeah I, it might he, he might be like the cigarettes he smoked all yeah. throughout the 60s 70s and 80s but you know he's gonna look at his wife and go fucking made me do that hey salute to all the jamaicans now you got a new a more progressive reason no throat cancer in that's Jamaica. right right and they smoke all the time think they about smoke. that they smoke all the time. Not a single case of throat cancer in Jamaica. I think we found the correlation. Pussy, eating pussy creates throat cancer. 
Eating pussy creates throat cancer and it's bad and we have to stop it right now. Women, Man. women, stop it. That's, oh my yeah, God. That's our monkey Joe. pox. You eat that monkey. So you think that, <laughs> listen, so that would be more a more effective commercial now? Can yeah. remember back in the day to put the microphones to the guy's throat <laughs> for the smoke commercial? I tried to keep my wife happy. <laughs> she left me anyway and she took my throat. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually a great idea. <laughs> I was married for 17 oh, years. It cost me my larynx. Oh, 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 man. I jump up and gargle now. I'm serious. Really? Wince. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. I run to the bathroom. I'll, I try not to swallow it. <laughs> now, that's that sense. Would, now, I'm not yeah, glad. That, that would make yeah, me feel bad. If Wait, I was, if I was your wife, wife right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it feels so insecure. Yeah, that's, come on. That's Nothing personal. What are you saying, Chris? What, I mean, like, I gargle after I eat something that's like nasty and Disgusting, you got that taste yeah. in your mouth like yeah i don't want that i don't want that throat cancer you let her see it like you let you you she knows she, you're going to gargle yo gargling is wild passive aggressive i mean i'm not like you could just spit yeah that's you what literally i mean just go, i mean i go to the like, bathroom uh, I lock my mouth out, right. like that's nuts dude I'm, I'm i'm impressed that you got the energy to even go gargle after that i'll be you out gotta prioritize yeah yeah, yeah. i'll be out like a light safety first safety first safety first <laughs> taylor pull up uh rick ross Pull up Rick Ross. I forgot what podcast Rick Ross was on, but Rick Ross brought up an age old debate because, you know, we're talking about Jamaicans that don't eat pom pom. Mm -hmm. Ross said he does not eat the ass. Oh, that's reasonable. Let's hear it. Let's hear what Ross had to say about eating ass. Like, do you eat ass? No, nah, I don't really have no taste for ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah. That's, I'm a, that's I'm not a, a vibe. Like, nah. you can't develop a taste for eating ass? Like, women like I'm that, just saying, you know, I know what I like. And I usually avoid the ass. I really? got a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never had a even slip up. Uh, no. Nah, Come on, Rose slip up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, you didn't even your tongue I'm in sure, there. I'm sure if that's what you did, you ain't slip up. True. So you ain't From ever, top to bottom is a long way. So you, Rose, ain't you ain't never eat ass. Yeah. I'm just letting you know it. That ain't a rose thing right there. Okay. How, how, you know, I'm a respect. You, it. I don't like it, but I'm a respect it. That's cool too, but and I want you to respect <laughs> being peed on from your neck down. Whoa! And if I splash your face, <laughs> whoa! Yeah, he's wild. Whoa! Um, whoa! Yo, I didn't know what that happened. I know he turned it into a peak conversation. Yeah, that was wild. But also, like, how far do we need to go with all this? Like, how how much do we need to eat? I mean, it's only two things to eat. Yeah, but like, even look, eating pussy is like a modern thing. Really? Don't you, nobody want to eat pussy like before AC. You nah, think they're nah. eating pussy back in the day? No, nah, they couldn't get to it. Too much hair. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. They don't have toilet paper. So yeah. you're wiping with fucking leaves or something like that. But they didn't know what clean vagina was back then. Exactly. Or clean ass. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is a relatively new thing that like we can be out here eating pussies. What if Say. we're doing it for pleasure, but back in the day they were doing it to clean each other? They were trying, probably. Wow. And you you didn't eat your wife's pussy. You had like a like a guy who ate your wife's pussy to clean it. Wow. Because there was no water pressure back in the day. Wow. You can't like douche or anything like that. Yeah. It's but like you had like a. Yeah. yeah. You probably had some sort of servant that would just run up in there. That's probably why they named it Eating Cat because they got it from watching cats. The cats clean themselves. Cats was cleaning themselves. Yep. And sometimes you see the mother cat licking on the child cat. They're like, this is what we have to do to clean. The them. only way that we can clean. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 100%. We're fucking this whole shit up. I like, mean, I think, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the eating the ass thing is as great as it feels, it's too much. The older I get, like, I realize we got to, like, kind of roll some shit back. It's getting too much. It's getting too <laughs> yeah, much. I don't want to take the same risk I used to. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah, and yeah, you know the yeah, thing? Yeah. Here's the thing. And a separate note, it's like, it's so funny how judgmental people are with the shit that they do. Like, all these people remember, like, Elon Musk's dad. You guys heard the story. Like, Elon Musk's dad, like, fathered children with yeah. his stepdaughter yeah. that he raised, yeah. right? And all these people, oh, my God, how could you? And it's like. The porn that you watch is stepdaughter porn. That's the I most popular porn. That. Me neither. Yeah, I see the I'm not a I, yeah, every time I see the headline, I'm like, why would I click on this? I don't watch pregnant. I don't watch stepdaughter. Yeah, but yeah, these yeah. kids that grew up with all the regular porn yeah. need a little bit more extreme, a little bit more extreme. Yeah. So they're watching the stepdaughter shit. And then he actually has kids with the fucking stepdaughter. Yeah, porn help be having them wild titles too, like punish my stepdaughter for not doing chores. I'm like, what? Too much. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I know I'm sound like some fucking old conservative boomer, I'm but like you. sometimes you got at, at a certain point, what is it going to be like having sex with my daughter? <laughs> is that going to be a video? That's is that allowed? I'm sure that's on there. I would never Google it. I'm, that's too far. Yeah, we can acknowledge yeah, yeah, yeah. that's too far. Right. I don't know if there's anything is too far anymore, man. Bro, stepchild is no, illegal. No, I'm with you. I agree with you. I agree with everything you're saying, but I don't think society as a whole 
thinks anything goes too far anymore. Yeah, that, that and that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. And I, I, I always say, like, if 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 every if one thing causes out if if everything causes outrage, nothing's outrageous. Mm. But I feel like that's where we're at. Now. Oh, like, because ah, uh, 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 like nothing uh. sounds crazy. Like we just we literally yeah. this is public shit being said. Yeah, we literally went from Kev, uh, Kevin Gates. Yeah, you know. Telling a woman, you know, clean uh, pussy, you which is this, fine. I'm okay pussy. with that. And then you, you got these women asking Rick Ross about eating ass. And and I like how they're being respectful if she doesn't like it. But it's like, what do you mean that you don't like? Like, you you don't understand why the guy doesn't want to lick where you shit, <laughs> right? Like, what? It, like, say again. P I mean, is not. P is shit. not. Yeah, like P no, is nothing bad. Not He's clean. Shit, are you Taylor? You it's pee, shit. shit, and and have your period out of the same hole. <laughs> you gonna yeah, move you faster. You gonna move yeah, faster. You do if, that Swiss Army knife you yeah. got down there. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> yeah, Taylor, you gonna move faster based on certain things. Somebody pee on you, you gonna move a little faster. You know, somebody shit on you, you gonna really move fast. Facts. Somebody throwing up that night, you gonna really move fast. But you know, a little sweat, you be like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Sweat and pee are the same thing. No. <laughs> it is, but no. <laughs> <laughs> now that I make a, it should be, right? But like you no. play D on someone sweating. You play D on somebody but sweating? You ain't playing D you know on the dude who's that, just peeing that's in the post. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You know what they should have said to Ross? They should have said, what if it was in Wingstop flavors? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> would you eat lemon pepper ass? Right. Hickory smoked ass? That would make it better. That's what I'm saying. That would make it better. That's right. You need, you need teriyaki nah. ass. Yeah, teriyaki ass I would eat, but that but that's the thing. I wouldn't eat it if it was mixed with some shit. And the reality <laughs> is, is you did take a shit somewhat recently. Don't we all eat shit, though? I don't. Isn't he cold out everywhere? I don't, I don't try to got commercials it. for that shit, bro. What do you mean? E. coli. That's not it. <laughs> and then land. <laughs> we just shooting, baby. We just shooting, <laughs> shooting, baby. It's a podcast. <laughs> Did you guys see the video out of Philly with the woman who got upset? <laughs> this, guy, yo, this guy's crazy. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Hey, uh, no. This is my thing. No. This is my thing. You didn't see how no. Shows looked at me. Shows, shows was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, you don't really try. Remember we were talking about the Black Panther shit about how the the, oh, the bad guy's man. the water now. Yes. Someone clipped that and posted it. That shit really made me laugh. When that movie comes out, we are gonna have so much goddamn fun in that movie because think about it, someone's gonna drown, oh, right? Like as oh, part of the movie, man. there's gonna be most likely big parts of Wakanda that that go down. Right. Right. I mean, it's gonna be what are we? Neymar and his whole team is underwater. They're the Atlanteans. Like they literally live underwater. It's gonna be rough, bro. Yeah, it is, it's isn't, be it? Rough. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what if Wakanda's like, finally, oh, we need your help, man. white people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It might be. <laughs> Call Ross, bro. Not Rick Ross, <laughs> Officer Ross. Right. What you about to say, Chris? Uh, just on the whole <laughs> shit thing, there was a, a video out of Philly. A, a black woman got very upset because there was a white guy at that rest. They were eating at a seafood restaurant outdoors. You saw, you know, the one I'm talking about. What happened? And it was hot out, so the guy wanted to give his dog water, but he was feeding the dog water out of a glass mm -hmm. from the restaurant. Yeah. And she got in super offended and was like, that's disgusting. I can see. I can yeah. See feel is, like that, it. is that that disgusting? Yes. I, mean, I can see why someone would take exception to it, for sure. Because it's just, he's like, I could be drinking out of that glass sure. next time I come here. That's like, right. That's right. But I could be drinking out of a glass and I had COVID and I'm still in the restaurant. That's is true, it? too. Yeah. Yes, you're right, logically. Right. But I do understand someone who is not maybe a big fan of dogs, sees dogs sniffing shit, licking ass, licking their own ass all the time, True. and then stuffing their snout in the glass and going, I don't want to do that. And you could easily ask for like some, what is it, to-go tin and then put the water in. That goes back to what Show said earlier about ignorance being bliss, though. Right. I don't care if I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, like don't, if, don't show me. That's right. That's right. Like if you saw somebody, if you saw a human eating ass, and then you saw him sit right down at the table and start drinking out of a glass. You'd be like, yo, what the fuck? You just ate ass, bro. Yeah. People got to eat here later. They got to wash this cup. You don't want to see it. Yeah, I don't want to see you it. You know, even yeah. though technically 
Any place you go publicly and people are eating the same things that you're doing with your mouth, they're doing they're with doing theirs. They're doing with theirs, yeah. Yes. Same thing with your parents. Like, your parents do that, too. Man. You don't want to know that. I'm the parent. You know what I mean? I'm the parent. You're the parent. I'm the parent. Shout I, out to Van Lathan. What Van do? Oh, Remember? my God. Yeah, with the greatest <laughs> tweet of all time out of nowhere. Van just woke up and he said, I'm going to just, I'm going to ruin everybody's day. For no reason. What do you say, uh? You know, all your moms used mom, to suck on your daddy's dicks and like it. <laughs> Something like that. Like, Hold on. I don't want to misquote it. It's so crazy. All I did was type Van Lathan mothers <laughs> and suck then, dick. And then, and said, Just Van Lathan. Our mothers sucked our dad's dicks for fun, but we never talk about it. 315 retweets, 3,901 quote teats, 1,723 likes, you sick fucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to pay some, huh? You want to do an ad? Let's do an ad. Let's do an ad. Then I want to come back and talk to my guy, Chris Morrow, about his mm -hmm. new project, Summer of 85. Uh, today's Brilliant Idiots episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Yes, sir. Salute to Blue Chew, man. Uh, you got three people on this podcast who absolutely positively need Blue Chew. Gang, gang. Um, Shoji, you're not 40 yet, right? You're almost. 38. 38. Bro. Yeah. Me and Chris are over 40. Chris, you did almost 50, right? Oh, I wish I was almost 50. I'm 51. Oh, Chris, 51. You look Ooh. good, bro. I'm not going to lie. You good 51. Uh. I don't care how you feel, Chris. That's a good 51. I feel not 75, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your energy is is old as fuck, but right. you physically look great for fifty one. Uh, I'm Appreciate forty four, man. So you know, if you need a little help in the bedroom, okay, Blue Chew. The temperatures aren't the only thing that's rising this summer. That's right, uh, Blue Chew, baby. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. All right, that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active, active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, okay? The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Trust me, man, you're going to need a little help, bro, okay? <laughs> fatigue, <laughs> age, all right? You might want to get another round off. You're going to need a little help. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code IDIOTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code IDIOTS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. You want to do the next Hell one, Oh, yeah. This episode is also brought to you by Diet Smoke. Everyone's always looking for the perfect high, okay? And a lot of times, it's not easy. Sometimes it's too light. Sometimes you're too high. You just got to call it a night. That's why we partnered with Diet Smoke. Okay, their Delta 8 and all new Delta 9 THC is hemp derived, federally legal and packs a beautiful buzz with each gummy. You're going to love the taste. You're going to love the high and you won't have to lie your way into a medical card. Okay, right now you can go to dietsmoke.com and use the code idiots for 20 percent off your entire order. And if you're not sure about Delta 8, Diet Smoke has an offer just for you. Okay, they know you're going to go love their gummies. Diet Smoke will send you a two pack of gummies for free. All you have to do is pay a few bucks for shipping. So head on over to dietsmoke.com. Grab your Diet Smoke stash and enjoy the rest of the episode. Let's get back to the show. All right. Church announcements. <clears throat> Shows you got any church announcements? Yes, man. I just want to thank everybody so much for sharing the special and watching the special and buying the special. It was uh, absolutely it was it was absolutely amazing. I posted something earlier today. I'm not sure when you guys are seeing this, but um, you know, a lot of people were reaching out and they're asking if I made my money back, and uh, we made it back three times so far. Woo! So fucking a better, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, this shit fell. That shit was terrifying going in, but it feels very good. And uh, a lot of people were like, uh, you know, and I believe in betting yourself, but I think this is really just betting on on people's support. And that made me have so much confidence, the fact that there was a lot of people that I believe uh, support me. And uh, so many people shared, you shared. Thank you so much for spreading the word. And like, 
it was it was really awesome. It was awesome to see people just come out. Obviously, Rogan, the fucking Rock, posting about the it. Like fucking Rock, I heard that about that. Crazy. Yeah, that I, was sent, crazy, I man. sent that to I sent that to a couple of network executives. No <laughs> word. No, no, you I did, let them know. I said, I, you know what I sent them? I sent them the TMZ article that said you. I don't want to put the number out there. Yeah, yeah. But they, 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 you know, they said what you did the first day. I don't know if that was true, but they said what you did the first day, and I sent the Rock thing, and I was just I, I, I sent a couple spicy little emails. Not, not like just, just like, you know, like. The pe- listen, what you said is true about the people support. It's one thing to yeah. bet on yourself. But no, you're betting on the people. I'm betting on the people. people. Yeah. And that is says a lot about, you know, your fan base and how your fans rock with you and how you know your fans will show up. 100%. You yeah. Know? It felt good. It just felt, I felt really justified. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, the people want good comedy. They want uncensored comedy. They don't want the watered down shit. And that was the gamble. And it was really fucking cool yeah. to see them support it and just enjoy it. And like the feedback on Twitter was crazy. And also like the idea we got to get everybody to watch it the same night. Yeah. That, like yeah, you never yeah, have that yeah, in streaming yeah, if it's yeah, yeah. sports. But like yeah. we had everybody sit down and they're all watching it together. People who stayed up around the world are doing it. And you you got to see Twitter light up like back in the day when we would watch yeah. things. You'd watch a, you know, Breaking Bad or something, and Twitter was just on fire. And it versus, was like maybe something like that. Or a like versus, versus. Yes, early like, versus, yeah. This like everybody's here for this one moment together, and it was just so fucking cool. People were throwing watch parties and shit. And like everybody wants something people say they're not supposed to have. What do you right. mean by that? Meaning like you're not supposed to have this. This isn't good for you. You know yeah, what I mean? It's bad. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Who are you to decide? Let the consumer decide. Exactly. Let us decide if this offends us. 100%. Let us decide if we don't want this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they tried to do it for you and it, it worked out for you. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was just, uh, that was very Three cool. Three times over. Yeah, it was, that was fucking awesome. Did so, you think you would do it? I mean, you said you were scared, but did you think you would do it that fast? That's what's I crazy had, to me. Honestly, dude, I had no clue. Right. My, I had no clue. I assumed, because I honestly, the only way I could map it out was through like pay-per-view boxing matches. Okay. So I was like, when do I get most, like I buy that right before the fight. So I'm like, okay, we're probably going to get a spike before the fight. So don't freak out a week or two before if the number's not there. Right. And the support before was great, but then the night of was crazy. And then the next day was crazy. And then the next couple days, so right now we're a few days in it. It's it's still crazy. Yeah. So I think what's happening is like a lot of people are maybe like hearing about it and going to get it. And it's only up for 12 more days or now whenever this comes out. It's July 31st is the last day it's up for and sale. And then what? Then I'm taking it down, bro. Really? Yeah. <coughs> because I think I think you got to I think you got to create some urgency. Like there are great specials, like stand-up specials that are online right now that I even find myself going, I'll get around to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's always yeah, yeah. there. And it's always there at your convenience. And they're great comics. And I'm like, I don't want that. I want this piece to be indulged right now. You buy it, it's yours forever. But you only have this window to buy it. What if they, so if they already bought it, do they get to keep it? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's yours. Okay. Everybody gets you can, to like, keep it. can, download it? Yeah, well, we're going to, basically, you can watch it. You have a link to watch it on the site. And then after that, you're going to be sent a link that you just keep in perpetuity. <laughs> so you'll always have the link. And then... And then it was fire. This uh, gambling site, uh, Bet Online, basically everybody who buys it before August first, they're matching the price of the special in your account on Bet Online. Oh, so so you get it for free wow. essentially. And they just liked the story. They were all in on it, and they just wanted to partner on something. And I was like, dude, that's the fuck. That sounds fucking good to me. So everybody won. Now you're gonna have so many family members coming to you asking you for money. So many friends <laughs> asking you for money. They're like, yo, well, you know, you bet on yourself. You exactly. bet on me now. Yeah, yeah. You, know what I mean? you should bet on yourself too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling. Hey, it pays off. <laughs> no. So it's cool. TheAndrewSouls.com. Please go get it if you missed out. Go get it. And just thank you so much, everybody who wrote articles and everybody who tweeted it and shared it. And like, seriously, I don't have a fucking publicist. So like, this is, this is grassroots as a guest. I literally have friends and then people that support me. Wow. And that's, that was the cool thing is like, we have enough of, of community amongst ourselves with podcasts and just like influential right. people that like, we can create this storm that networks can't even create for their own comedy that's right. specials. That's right. Like, that's right. A network can't create no, this right. sto- type right. of storyline. You know, you know what a network would pay for a rock tweet? <laughs> not just a rock tweet, not a generic like watch tonight. Like, man, I watched this shit and this motherfucker funny as shit. Like, like rock, you could tell he watched it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's different. You know how much that costs? That, yeah. That's a six, six month negotiation. Right yeah. Just to get it. It's you know? probably half a million dollars. 
Easily. A million. I mean, it's 300 million people on his Instagram. Are you serious? Yeah. Not more than that. 325 million? No, no, I'm talking about for him to do it more. A million? That. I'm just saying. The it's rock, like, how, the rock, uh, I'm thinking The Rock got to be $2 million. Maybe $2 million. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm thinking. So for me, I'm, I'm thinking, like so grateful. I'm like, you're just going to give me that? You know him? I mean, he's been like, uh, you know, he's reached out. He's been supportive. He loves, you know, he loves the comedy. So. So it's organic. Yeah, it was just, and I just hit him up and I was like, hey man, I'd love to just send you this. I didn't ask for anything. I was like, I'd love you to send it and, you know, you know, enjoy it, watch it, whatever. And uh, yeah, and he hit me back. And it's fun. He like leaves voice notes. So you like hear the voice. Yeah. He's just like, hey, what's up, Schultz? And like, I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but The Rock, you would, The Rock, he has to love inappropriate comedy. He's a fucking WWE yeah, star. He gets in it. the early 2000s, yes. late 90s. Yeah. Of with, course. Who was hilarious. Hilarious. In the yes. Like, that's why we loved him. And they were inappropriate. As fuck. Who are you talking about? Yeah. Chris McMahon used to let the N word fly. That was really? a wild boy. You know, what? Chris McMahon walked up to Booker T and said, my N word, and just kept moving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Yes, hell yeah. WD super, WWE is super inappropriate. Yeah. But uh, go to the andrewshows.com, grab that, and um, go to uh, blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Um, speaking of community, we have the Black Effect Podcast Festival happening Sunday, August 28th at the Mirage in Brooklyn. I'm really looking forward to this, man. Little Duval is hosting. Hmm. Uh, DJ uh, Nala Simone is hosting. We have live podcasts from the 85 South Show, Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, DC Young Fly, Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Wheezy. Um, Reasonably Shady with uh Robin Dixon and Giselle Bryant. Um, Who else is going to be there? We Talk Back Podcast is going to be there. Uh, I'm missing some people. Um, Big Facts Podcast with Bank and Scream and um Jade. All I said, the Smoke. I, stay, I said all the, uh, yeah, all the Smoke. All the Smoke uh, will be there. Um, Mouse Jones is doing Trap Karaoke. Let's go. Um, we have a, a, a woman in podcasting panel. We have a a business of podcasting panel. So, man, it's just going to be a day of community. It's going to be food. It's going to be drinks. You got to be 18 to enter, um, 21 to drink. And just go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to buy your tickets. Are they going to be doing live podcasts or? Oh, yeah, they're doing live podcasts. Interesting. 85 South Show's doing their podcast. Everybody, everybody's doing their podcast live. And wow. Yeah, so in between everybody doing the live podcast, um, we'll have a couple of panels. Because my thing is like, when we talk about these communities, like people want to come out and they want to be entertained, but it's like, yo, since we got all these people together, let's give them some information too. Mm. So why not do a business uh, of a podcasting panel? Um, you know, we're going to have vendors there. You know, some of the vendors we'll have on deck are people that can probably help you start a podcast, mm. whether it's with microphones or whatever else. So yeah, man, Sunday, August 28th at the Mirage in Brooklyn, the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival. Uh, we hope we hope to see you there. And my second, I got three church announcements. This is number two. Number two, uh, Hell of a Week, which is formerly the God's Honest Truth. It premieres Thursday, uh, July 28th at 1130 p.m. Okay. We got a new name and a new night. The new name is Hell of a Week. New night is Thursdays immediately after the Daily Show. So as soon as the Daily Show goes off on Thursday nights, Hell of a Week comes on. Um, great, great name. And uh, one of one of one of one of my first guests is here with us today. Let's go. His name is uh, Andrew Schultz. You might okay. know him as the Hezzy. Let's go. You know what I mean. And oh, Andrew, I'm telling you right now, I need you to really be Andrew. I'm showing up. Yeah. No. 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 I'm showing up. He's got the green light. Yeah, I need you to be Andrew. Can I shoot? Yeah, I need you to shoot. Can shoot. I shoot? Shoot. I need you to shoot. Shoot. Can we? Can we make? I want some you to think about all the comedy executives that fronted on Ooh. you. Especially ones at Comedy Central, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they all lost their jobs. But, uh, <laughs> they all got fired. I was, don't fuck with the kid, bro. I'm vengeful. I am vengeful, bro. It's that simple. We can work together. We can make money together. Or you can lose your job. It's that simple. Convert or die, right? It's a right. aim. I will accept conversion. Right. But if not. Oh, man. It is I, what it is. Nah, this season I want, I'm doing I'm doing panel. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so what what can we do? What can we say? Are there other people on the panel? How many of our, uh, us are there? Oh, uh, I think I want to do. I think I want to do three. Three? Yeah, because you know what I miss. I miss. Remember the uncommon sense format. Yep, that was fun. You know what I'm saying? Fun, when yeah. it was us and we were just talking, like it wasn't really no pressure. It wasn't too much heavy lifting for me. It was just like how we do this. It yeah. feels better. It feels you know more natural. To me, I also like you being in a position where like you're you have your opinions shine, you know, yeah. because 
you're a great interviewer, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people that are great interviewers don't have the muscle that they can just also have hot takes and be funny. Yeah. Right. And I think you probably were known first for that and then later on for your interviewing yeah, skills. Yeah, absolutely. Like interviewing was almost something you developed later. So in when I see you on a show, I don't only want to see you asking questions to less interesting people. Right. I want to, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I want to see, they should ask you shit. Yeah. He so, can't only run the point. He has to, he has to be Steph. He he's a shooter, bro. Run the yeah. point, but, but let shoot the too. guy run. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I do like that. Like, if we're just talking where you can, we you know, bounce back and forth, we can all have our hot takes, yeah. we can react, we can like feed off one another, but it doesn't have to be a thing where it's like, and how do you feel? And how do you that's feel? That's right. That's right. Like, Let's talk. Those people on the panel, they got to step up. That's like, right. you're here for right. a reason. Yeah. And I like community, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels good when, like, like you know, if you watched, Uncom uh, I said Uncommon Sense, if you watched The God's Honest Truth last season, like, the last few episodes, it was more community-based. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have people in there that we can talk and riff and all of that type. So, yes, that's that's what you'll yeah. see. Uh, Bill, you'll Thursday. develop characters for the show, too. Like, you'll have the people that, like, will continue to come back on. That's right. And for whatever reason, they're the perfect person to have a hot take about this thing. That's right. That's you know? right. So, so next Thursday, uh, 11.30 p.m. What is that? July 28th, I yeah. believe. Can we get Dr. Umar on? I got, I'm, uh, you know I'm having Dr. Umar on this. Can thing. I go on with Dr. I Umar? I would love that. We should have Dr. Umar. Let me see. Come on, my boy. <laughs> Come on, my boy. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can I give you the panel? Can I give you the panel? Come on, Come on talk to me. Okay. Me? Okay. Dr. Umar. Okay. Sean King. At some at some point this season, that has to be an hour special. That no, can't, no, that, no. That can't the, be half bro, hour. The four of us that's fire, bro. is <laughs> no. Come on, at some that can't point be this half season, hour. Internet shut down. That's happening. At some point this season, we gonna make that happen. I promise you. That I is internet. You. I promise. You. Shut down. I prom Damn, I wish Black History Month was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yo, imagine that being a Black History Month episode, yo, man. Yo, let's wow. have fun with TV, wow. man. Would Sean King do it? Fun with it. Um, That's my only thing. Yeah, I don't know. Sean act like think... you. Sean act like Chris. He's like he's concealed. He is a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Sean, I and, and I mean, I get him. it. Rightfully so. You know, I think mean? you could get him to do it. Even if it's via Zoom, it'd be fun. But it'd be better live. Bro. What if I? What if I jab him with a twenty three and Me test live? <laughs> <laughs> what if I do that? He's like, oh, what is no, that? No, 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 he's been better. Well, no, in 30 minutes. No, even better. You tell him it's a COVID test, so he does it before the show, <laughs> yeah, and, and you get the results back. <laughs> <laughs> our, our two weeks prior, you say, yo, you got to send in your COVID results. Yo. <laughs> he's going to steal the COVID results for the DNA, right? Genius. <laughs> Bro. Yes, dude. Uh, shoot my guy, Sean, fun. man. Shoot the Sean King. Um, but make sure you tune in next Thursday right after the Daily Show. Hell of a week. Uh, that's at C the Show. Um, and third church announcement. Uh, right now, uh, we have a new project out. You know, um, me and Kevin Hart, we got our uh, company at Audible called SBH Productions. Our mm -hmm. first release was Finding Tamika. We put that out earlier this year. Our second release is Summer of 85. Man, it, it's so interesting how God works, right? Because we had these four or five releases that we were putting out um, this year. And, you know, it's not like we planned it this way. This is just the way things divinely happen. But, you know, finding Tamika was a project, um, about Tamika Houston, who was a young black woman who went missing in the early 2000s in Spartanburg, South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? That's my home state. And now some of 85 is this story about something that happened in Philly. That's Kevin Hearts, oh wow! <laughs> you know, homie, yeah, yeah, yeah. hometown, home state. So it's just like it's just interesting how that worked. But uh, Chris Moreau is the creator of Summer of '85. Tell us about Summer of '85, Chris. What is it? Well, Summer of '85 is like you mentioned, SBH Productions, which I actually didn't know what that stood for until like a month ago. Short, black, and handsome. Wasn't even. I was like, oh, yeah. So that was funny. That's messed up. When you see Kev, that's not the first thing you think about me and Kevin. We'll take no. it. It's not. No. Just the black, no short, no handsome. Oh, it's probably short and black. Handsome subjective, that's the one. That Wait, is. is it only named after Kevin? It's me and Kevin. <laughs> short, black, and handsome. All right, fuck you. I can't go. Wait, what is, what's the project about? Bro, I did, I did a podcast. Sorry to interrupt. I did a podcast on the West Coast, bro, and there was this girl on the podcast 
And uh, I walked she in. She was handsome? No, she. they asked her if I was handsome. She's a Filipino girl, right? And no. she was only here for like three years. And then she was like, no. And then I was like, I was like, damn. Uh, and then she, they're like, why not? And he goes, his nose is too big. <laughs> right? I was like, what the fuck? And then she's like, it takes up your whole face. Whoa. I, and I, she's like, you're, and then she says this. This is what pissed me off. She goes, yeah, you're, it makes your eyes look so small. No. No. I said, don't make me say it. I said, don't make me say it, That was lady. a setup. They set that, you up. That was, that was a setup. That was a setup. That's too far. Nah, she was setting you up. She was setting you up. That was pre-planned. She had it written out. If she ended with that, if she ended with that, there was a setup. Did she end with that? No, because I had some things to say. Uh, I, but that's my point. Was that the last thing she said? Though? Oh, yeah. There was a setup. And then your nose that big? Say again? I don't think your nose is that big. It's I not mean, that big. This is a schnoz. You got a piece. Right. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. I would you trade for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yours came with the glasses. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those grouch on marks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! She was supposed to come no, off. She right? killed me. <laughs> she so came with the she glasses. killed me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she killed me, Chris. Oh. Summer '85, Chris. All right, Summer '85. Oh, uh, SBH Audible. It's a five-hour audio um, docu series, essentially. Mm -hmm. He's a fire, and it's hosted by Kevin Hart. Yeah, Kevin. He, he lent his voice it. to yep. it, so that was really exciting. And it's about the summer of 85 in Philadelphia, which was notable for two things. One was the Live Aid concert, if you guys are familiar with that, which July 13th, 1985, this massive concert where the goal was to feed Africa because there was a... Does this ring a bell to you? Do you know anything about yeah, Live Aid? I, I mean, I, I remember that. That's, was that around the whole We Are The World thing? Exactly. So that's what that's came... That's the song that they were singing it for, right. right? We Are The World started it, and they were like, there's so much momentum around We Are The World. Bob Geldof, who was a British rock star, he's like, we got to do a concert. We're going to do two concerts, one in London and one in Philadelphia. And they picked... The Phil London one is the one that Queen performed at. So that's what... London is famous for two things. Yeah. Queen's... Everyone considers it Queen's greatest performance and then also U2's breakout performance because Bono wades out into the crowd and that was a big deal in the 80s. So that's what's notable. The Philadelphia performance gets a little lost in history. Uh, it's not considered... The big thing is everyone was waiting for a Led Zeppelin reunion and it happened and it was trash. And wow. It kind of fell through, but one of the things we talk about in the series is uh, the Philly concert was also Run DMC's first big performance. And in a lot of ways, this was a massive concert. I mean, it, today at the time, the idea of, I think, two billion people watched it, that was unheard of in the 80s. There was nothing. Two billion? Two billion. It, got, it was on network TV? Uh, simulcast. Beamed to the entire world. This is when the Soviet Union was still behind the Iron Curtain. This was everybody's introduction to hip hop. Nobody wow. had seen hip hop. A third either. of the world. Massive. Wow. Massive concert. Wow. Um, and it raised a lot of money for Ethiopian famine victims, which was great. So this was in some ways Philadelphia at its highest point. But then the other thing that happened in the summer of 1985 in Philadelphia was the MOVE bombing, if you guys are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. MOVE was in an organization uh, started by a guy named John Africa in the early 70s that was basically against the system. They were back to nature. Um, everybody took on the last name Africa. They grew dreadlocks and they were kind of locked in this war for almost a decade with the city of Philadelphia. They had a, a siege and confrontation in 1978 that ended up with a cop killed. And that kind of like really made things tense. And then in 1985, they had built this compound in West Philadelphia and it ended with uh, the police dropping a bomb on the row home that Move lived in, which killed um, 11 people, including five children. The police department, fire department essentially didn't put the fire out. So it burned down 61 homes in the neighborhood. And it this is 85. This is 1985. Put this in perspective. This is 1985. Where does the police get a bomb? They got it from the feds whoa and they flew a helicopter they flew a state police helicopter over it's a row home you got a picture of urban philadelphia yeah, yeah, yeah. these houses are right next to each other and they dropped the bomb on this house and not only did they do it but because they were still bitter or what have you from what happened a couple of years earlier and they killed the cop when they killed the cop you got to remember you had 300 police there hundreds of firemen and they don't put the fire out and they let it burn and this entire community gets destroyed. Uh, so for me, as a kid growing up, I had paid close attention to the story. My grandmother and her entire extended family actually lived on that block. 
you know, 40 years before that, I was always very familiar with it. And as a kid in Philadelphia, this was the story. Mm. The move bombing was what everybody talked about. But as I grew older and, uh, you know, traveled into the world, I was always shocked that nobody had heard about this mm. thing, right? And what was the reaction from the city? Like, I mean, if you know, you're a, a, it doesn't matter if you're white, black, whatever, but if you, you, you see a town get bombed by people that are supposed to be protecting and serving, like that had to have some type of reaction, I would think. Well, right? I mean, it was a scandal. But what makes, you know, one of the things that's interesting about the story to me is that it's a story that depending on what your POV is, you kind of project your own take on it, right? Mm. So to a lot of people, you know, when you talk about Black Lives Matter and police brutality, like, hey, this is the ultimate expression of that, right? Like, what's worse than bombing a house and fucking killing 11 people? Um, but when you start to get into the story, it gets more complicated. It's more nuanced. And I think that's one of the things that's interesting about it. For instance, the cop that Move was kind of locked in this battle with was Frank Rizzo, who was an infamous huh. cop in Philadelphia, right? He was this hard charging, take no prisoners, um, Italian guy who had been a police commissioner and his police department was like brutal. I mean, one of the things we we talk about in the series, he ran one of his things that he ran on when he ran for mayor in 1970 was I'm going to make Attila the Hun look like the F word. That's wow. that was an actual campaign. Which, which, which F word? No? I don't, I'm, the what? Oh, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That one. So ima yeah, yeah. imagine a mayor who's actually running on that. Fauci. As, right. Yeah. He's going to make him look like Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So but the mayor who actually dropped the bomb or who was in charge of dropping the bomb was Philadelphia's first black mayor. Oh, right. So now it's getting complicated. You have this black group that's in this row home that's fighting a black mayor and the mm -hmm. black mayor is the one who actually drops the bomb. And not, he should be in charge of the police department. Right. He should be in charge of the fire department. Why doesn't he order them to put it out? Wow. Why didn't they just raid the home? Uh, well, I mean, they shot 10,000 rounds into it before they dropped the bomb. The raid started at like six o'clock in the morning and they shot. What this group had done is they had fortified it, uh, right? They had basically turned it into a fort. They boarded up all the windows. They built a bunker on the roof. So they tried, they actually set off small bombs to try to blow holes in it. But because this cop had gotten killed in the earlier confrontation, they didn't want to lose any more cops, basically. Uh, 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 so they had tried to to get into the home before, and then a cop got shot. In 78. So, wow. damn, they held a grudge. This is like a 10-year kind of running battle between the city and this group. Yeah. That, and what was this group fighting for? What was their... So, they're, they, they're back to nature. So, it, it's an interesting group because in some ways, the things that they were about are things that are very much in vogue right now. So, they didn't believe self -sufficiency, in... Self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency, urban farming, yeah. composting, policing themselves. Policing themselves. Yeah. They didn't believe in money. They didn't believe in holding jobs. They didn't believe in going to school. But the issue was they took everything to such a radical extreme that it was impossible to live around them. So they didn't believe in, for instance, this is a small example, they didn't vaccinate their dogs. They'd have hundreds of dogs, but they wouldn't vaccinate their dogs. You're supposed to vaccinate your dog? I'm not a dog owner, so I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to get a bunch of shit. There's a disease yeah, that dogs can get. Dog. If you don't vaccinate them. So their dogs would die by the dozens and they would just throw the dog's bodies in the backyard. And then the food scraps, they didn't eat. They didn't cook their meat. They'd eat raw chicken. They'd eat raw beef. Huh? When they're done with it, they just throw it in the backyard. Well, if you start dumping animal carcasses in your backyard for an extended amount of time, what happens? Thousands of rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugs, roaches. Now you're living in this tight community where everybody's row homes and all of a sudden you're attracting literally thousands of rats, thousands of bugs. You couldn't walk down the street. Um, they ha they wanted to have their demands met. So they built speakers on the outside of their houses and 24 hours for five days at a time, they would broadcast kind of this political rhetoric. You don't want to live around that. Oh, so the community was also quite, very frustrated by them. Right. So this is where it starts to get complicated. And you, you have this kind of middle class black community that this is happening in the middle of. Oh, yeah. And they want something done, but nobody wants what ended up happening done. Yeah. So why would the uh, city bomb? Because <clears throat> I, 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 I thought it was Little Africa. So I thought all of these people in this one section all were on the same page. But I didn't realize it was other families and everything mixed in. So why would this uh, city just bomb it and, you know, hurt some of those families that didn't have anything to do with 
the move organization? Well, that's the, you know, that's the tough question, right? Oof. This this was, I mean, one of the things we try to talk about in the series, and this is something that Kevin talked about, is like, you know, essentially in white Philadelphia, every black neighborhood's the ghetto, right? Like, that's how things were looked at in the 70s and 80s. Like, and there's a famous quote uh, where uh, Bob Geldof, who organized the Live Aid Live concert, they were asking him, well, why did the city give you the stadium for free? And he goes, well, I think the mayor is trying to deflect from the fact that they bombed the ghetto, right? Like, that was the perception. It wasn't the ghetto. Like, this was a really middle nice middle class neighborhood. Uh, it had been Jewish. I mean, that's why my relatives li- lived there. And then in the 50s and 60s, actually, Wilt Chamberlain bought his mother a house in the block. Wilt Chamberlain, the biggest basketball star in the world at the time. And then it slowly became an African American neighborhood, but it was like people took care of their houses. Everybody owned their houses on the block. Like, this was not like some rundown hood. So the question, you know, that you look at is, did this happen because they were black? You know, would they drop a bomb on a middle-class white neighborhood and then let 61 Mm. houses burn? Probably not. They probably wouldn't have done it without the support of the community, too. That's an interesting thing. If the entire community was pushed, was supporting what this, the MOVE project, what is it called? MOVE organization. The MOVE organization was doing, it'd be a lot harder to drop the bomb. But when you have the entire community complaining, oh, there's rats in the backyard, cockroaches everywhere, there's music we can't everywhere. Sleep. We can't sleep. This is awful. Please do something, mayor, do something. And keep in mind, the more wealthy you are, the more influence you have in politics. That's right. So if they were a poor black neighborhood, there's a chance they would have no influence to right. get the police to actually do something. But the fact that you have Wilt Chamberlain's mom living there. Right. You have access to certain political figures where you can get the fucking grinds or what is it? Get the gears. Mm-hmm. Oh, they the they struck a deal because this bombing happened in 85. I think it was in 83. Wilson Good's running for mayor. Who's he running against? Frank Rizzo, the former mayor, the ex-cop. Oh. Good's people come to this neighborhood and say, listen, we know this is a problem. We're going to get this out of here if you support us. But be cool us. now. Don't turn it into an issue now because it's going to work in Rizzo's favor because he's the law and order guy. Mm -hmm. He's the tough guy. If we have this thing blow up again, it's going to scare white Philadelphia. So just be cool. Let it let it rock. And then once we're in charge, it's going to be a black mayor and we'll handle this the right way. Mm -hmm. That was the deal. The deal was cut. It just didn't turn out that way. Imagine being from that community complaining about uh, the move organization and asking them to do something. And then they come do what they did and you get your house gets burned down, too. Oh, and it's worse than that. So not only do you lose their house. So that happened in 1985. They never properly rebuilt the houses. Right. So they came in. There was a basically a crooked developer who built really shitty houses, I guess you can say. The houses almost fell down. So people have been in like a state of limbo for like literally the last 35 years. I mean, that that neighborhood never came back. What made you want to tell this story, Chris? Like, like, you know, because you're a Philly guy and there's a lot of different stories you could tell. What made you feel like, you know what, right now is the time for summer of 85? Well, you know, I think the first part about it was I was just shocked how few people knew about it. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, before we started, we were talking about Tackstone, and I remember a conversation having him with in the studio I had with him. This is probably going back maybe four or five years at this point, and telling him about it. He was like, "Yo, I've never heard about that shit. That's the wildest story I've ever heard yeah, in my life." Tax has been in jail for five years, right? Yeah. So six years ago, whatever <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like even even talking to Taylor, I I played a little bit for Taylor the other day. Taylor's from Philly, right? Taylor was born not too long after this happened. Did what you year, know what, about it? What year was you born, Taylor? I remember mentioning my mom in the studio, 90. 90. Oh, so, yeah. six years after 85? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but still, I mean, an attack on the American people by the government? By the government. This, these are very rare. I mean, it's so. Not the first time. No, it's not, but yeah. it, it is rare. Waco, to me, is the closest analogy. Nah. No, yeah. what about Tulsa? Uh, Tulsa, yeah. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street going back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and even that, it recent, was like vigilante groups. It wasn't, it was like, wasn't there like no, Kent the University? Thing. Wasn't there a university that the government attacked? That was an anti-war protest. Yeah. And they attacked. That was the National Guard shot two students. Yeah. But even then, that's not a bomb. This A bomb is crazy. But, that, but they, that's what they did in Tulsa. In Tulsa, they did the same. Yeah, they, they did dropped, do aerial. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah. aerial. They that being bombs. said, when, when I have neighbors that are playing music loud late, I I do feel like bombing. 
Right. I'm a like, Karen. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. fucking Karen. Well, like, you know what's funny? You got to see I, me every fucking day. No, no. Right. I'm, here's the thing. I'm not a Karen, but I have a Karen in my building. Right. And I keep her on my hip. Right. Because when, <laughs> when it's loud, do what you do, baby. You like, activate her. No, you need the Karen. Right? Because I get to be like cool dad, oh, but Karen God. is going to be on it. You like Cagney and Lacey? Y'all a team? What's that? What's Y'all that? like Cagney and Lacey? They a team? Y'all a team? But what's Cagney and Lacey? You remember Cagney and Lacey? Female huh. detectives, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they were female detectives? Yeah. Oh, you know they're getting to the bottom of everything. <laughs> yeah. like, why aren't there more female detectives to be honest I get an iPhone just give us I'll figure out his password dumbass Yo, that's what you need you need only female detectives oh, oh my god right though yeah man <laughs> But no, you're right. A bombing of the American people should be. I mean, that's got to be part of the history. But like, but why would America make that a history? That's true. Cut that out. We, we never did, did exactly. that. What are you talking about? Exactly. Like, nah, that only happens in China and Russia. That, Don't worry that, about that. It was like early brilliant idiot episode. That never happened. That never happened. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, I've I've just been shocked because it was such a big story. Growing up is such a big part of my life. And then, you know, I think the other reason I, I was interested in it is I was I was watching live aid footage um, also a few years ago. And the whole thing of live aid was we're going to feed Africa. We're going to save Africa. Right now, never mind that the famine was taking place in Ethiopia. It was, it's not like everybody in Africa was starving. But that was like this mission that drove this massive concert. And remember what I said earlier Everybody in Move's last name was Africa, Africa. Yeah. Mm. right? And I was like, this is kind of crazy. Like, you have the city coming together to save Africa the same summer they're bombing the Africas. And so I was kind of like playing with this idea. And, you know, like there was a moment where very early in the process, um, I spoke to a guy named Mike Africa Jr., who's Mike part Africa. of Move. Yeah. And his parents were very caught up in this and locked away for 40 years uh, for their connection with the organization. And I was like, he was born in jail, wasn't he? <clears throat> Mike was born in jail, actually. And, you know, we were just, it wasn't even an official interview. I was just talking to him and I was like, I'm just curious, like, did you have any feelings about Live Aid? And he was like, Live Aid, man, that was so fucked up. They would do all that for Africa after they killed the Africas. And I was like, all right, I'm on to something here. Yeah. It was yeah. arguably one of the most horrific days in Philadelphia history. A day that many in the city wanted to put behind them as quickly as possible. But not Mike Africa's grandmother. She felt like it was a cover-up and it was a way to whitewash and it was a way to try to like make people forget about what just happened. And the idea that you're going to do this for Africa, in her words, was you're about to do this thing for Africa, but you don't care anything about the Africas. And she was saying that, like, how dare you pretend to care about the lives of anyone, especially Africa, Africa. You know, unfortunately, Africa. the issues it's talking about, whether it's police brutality, whether it, the famine in Ethiopia is still happening today, or whether it's just like really like the idea of the of cities or communities that are like split directly in half. I mean, how much are we seeing that? today. Absolutely. Really? That's always been America, though. It's just that, you know, we didn't have all of the platforms and outlets to see it so much in real time. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's insane to think that America has never been too divided. You know what I mean? I mean, we're all Americans, but right. there's always been Republicans. There's always been Democrats. There's always been people who think this, who think that. Like, it's always been that way. It's always been we're pro, anti. That's, yeah. that's, that's what America... America's all about pro and anti. Right. So this, this story is this taken distilled down to its essence and then the extreme of what happens when you have these tribal splits yeah. within a community. And, you know, the thing, and I don't have an answer for it, but the thing I really was trying to get out through this series and everybody I interviewed and talked to was, which is, was there an off-ramp? And what I mean by that is you have this situation that's brewing for over a decade that kind of ends up in this terrible, the worst case scenario. It couldn't have gone worse. Where were the moments looking back on this that we could have got off this this path, right? Where are the moments where when you see something like this happening, you can actually people can slow down and it just doesn't keep building momentum and nobody really has an answer for it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think 
the hope for something like this outside of that is interesting and engaging is just that how can you look at the situations that are happening now in this country and figure out how to take these off ramps before Oof. you get to this point? Because think, it can fucking happen. Yeah, I think it's too late. I, told, be, I tell you that all the time. I, I, I think that we're way past go. I don't think there's no putting the goddamn toothpaste back in the YouTube at this point. You don't think? No. I think the only thing that's going to stop it is the worst possible outcome, whatever that potentially could be. And so I really that's, don't know that's that taking is. move and then putting it across the grand scale. Yeah. Right? You don't want that. Yeah. No, we don't. You don't. We don't fucking want that. When I think of, when I think of the, uh, Live Aid and I think of that, uh, the, the bombing of move, that's both so American, right? Right. Because that's what, that's America in a nutshell. It's about like, okay, we want, we, we, we promise freedom. Right. We promise liberty. We promise <laughs> justice for all. But, we're also going to keep these people from being free. Right. There is not going to be no justice for them, and you're not going to see no liberty. Like, that is America to me in a in a nutshell, always. Right. Because it's like, I never understood why you would want to take away that independence. I never understood the bombing of Black Wall Street. Like, isn't this what you want? Isn't this what you want? This, you know, group of people that was enslaved in this country, they've figured it out. They've got their own resources. They pick themselves up by their bootstraps. That's right. That's what, that's, that's that's what I kept saying, saying right. about the, the block that got bombed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Osage Avenue. I was like, yo, this is black America playing by the rules. That's right. This is black America invested in the system. They own those houses. The block was well kept up. They would sweep the block every week. They literally they changed. complained about the Africans. They came like, and said, yo, work yeah. with us. And then what did they get for it? 35 years of fucking heartache. Man. Which happens every time. Like, whether it's, right. whether it's the uh, city in Philly for move, whether it's uh, Black Wall Street, whether it's the town in North Carolina, like every Wilmington. single time, yeah. Wilmington, yeah, yeah. every yeah. single time black communities do that, actually grow a community, they get burned down to the ground. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's like being Chloe. It's like being Chloe. Every time I give you a chance. Every time I give you a chance, Mr. Tristan America Thompson. Okay? <laughs> Every time I give you a chance, you screw me fucking over. <laughs> Yo, Tristan Thompson really the goat, bro. He's the awesome, man. Come on, he the man. goat. Come on. He's living his best life. But he's, he's young, he's, right? I don't know. They are. Oh, they're not. <laughs> but uh, Summer 85, go get that right now on Audible. Um, what, do you, what do you want the outcome to be, Chris? Like, what do you hope this project ultimately does? Well, I mean... I don't I, mean success-wise. Yeah. I'm just talking, talking about for the people. Like, what do you want people to get from this? Well, I want them to understand the history of it. And then I want them to think about how you can apply it to what's happening now, uh, not only in terms of America, but, you know, specifically for Philly, like, I'll be honest, like, and again, like to kind of come back to what you said, I don't know if Philly's out of control right now because I'm just turning on Twitter and every two seconds I'm seeing people getting shot and yeah. the city's sort of falling apart or if it's really happening. But you know, Philly <clears throat> is a town that, you know, has had some issues. And I think, you know, probably that's why Kevin wanted to, you know, lend his voice and get involved. Like, I think, you know, one of the things I've t been talking about is like Philly never wants to admit it, but we have a complex about being a second class city, mm -hmm. city, you know, really up to New York, <laughs> New York. Even we really don't want to admit it. Boston. Um, Boston. <laughs> yeah. New York, Philly takes <laughs> a backseat to Boston. I didn't know that. Really? Those are the sports. Oh, yeah. got you, got you. You know, you. and also, you know, like Boston just seems more together. So, you know, on one hand, like Philly has this attitude of like, fuck that. We're rough. We're tough. We don't need anybody else. We're doing. But if we're being honest as Philadelphians, like there is this insecurity complex. Um, so, you know, I hope that within Phil, you disagree, Taylor? Jersey has that to Philly, but Philly has it to New York, to L.A., to Chicago, to Boston anyway. So, you know, like I just, you know. It's it's cliche, but if you don't learn from the past, you're going to repeat it, yeah. right? And the fact that something kind of that crazy could happen, you know, this, again, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma was what, close to 100 years ago? Over, yeah. This shit was our lifetime. I mean, I went to Live Aid, you know, like I was there. 36 years <clears throat> ago. 36 years ago, which is a long time, but in terms of history, it's 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 half a second. So, you know, it's just really learning from this thing and figuring out, like, as the country, to me at least, I'm a little down right now just in terms of where things are at. And I, I do feel like things are spiraling. So, again, it's just this idea of, like, 
How do you pull back, look at something that seems to be this kind of march towards this kind of inevitable ending and say, yo, how can we pull back and fix this thing before it goes there? Let's talk about it. How do you? <clears throat> how do you pull back the foreskin and make sure? Because I, 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 I'm i telling y'all, I'm, I tell Chris this shit all the time. I don't, this shit going to end back. It is. I, I, and I'm talking about globally. I am not just, because it's, it's, here's the thing. It's like, it's literally like five worst case scenarios all happening right now. Like we always talk about America because we're arrogant as shit, right? Mm-hmm. So we talk about the racial tension and how civil rights and stuff are being, uh, you know, pulled back. What about climate change is real as fuck, bro. You mm. see how hot it is here now? Yeah. See what's going on in Europe? Mm. You know what I mean? You were telling me about that book you was reading. There's yeah. threats of nuclear war every goddamn day. <laughs> like There's like five worst case scenarios happening all at once. Ignore it. The earth is... <laughs> <laughs> just ignore it. Why are you... Like, why are you... <laughs> you going to fix climate change yourself by no, putting no, your no, fucking no, straw no. into the garbage? Yeah, it's like, over. It's over. No, no. Just who cares? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. ride it out. Yeah. yeah. Climate, like, yeah. it's going to be fine. It's going to yeah. be a little hotter for our kids, a little hotter for their kids. And then... Uh, yeah, but you don't whatever. have kids yet. See, that's the difference, man. Once you Exactly. Have, once you have don't, kids... Don't bring me into that world. Right, 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 once right. I have kids, <laughs> then I'll worry about <laughs> okay. them. But until... That, let me enjoy this. Now, I will say this show to this point. Is that again? When you have kids, you're worried about the world that they're inheriting. They're inheriting. I assume yes. Yes. that's what you got to yeah. do. The sure. Schultz's point, I, um, like I've, I've always been a very God-fearing person, but the reason I'm really giving it to God and maybe even leaning a little bit more into religion now, because I got to believe in something better here. And I got to believe that me and my oh, you're family are all to together. the end. Right. No. <laughs> that's why. No, I'm when not. When you're fucking no. 90, you get every day this <laughs> Jewish, Muslim, whoever's out there, let me in, please. <laughs> All right. praises due to Allah, Jehovah, Buddha, All of them. Hashem, every <laughs> Jesus, everybody who's got the gates. Who's ever at the gates? Oh I think you're right. God. That's you're what going happens. out in field service on Sunday and you got the ash on your head. You know, every day. <laughs> but no, it's true because I, I have to believe there's something better here. Because I think, first of all, I think God has had enough of it, but I think the earth is rebelling. When Maybe. you see sinkholes just opening up in the Bronx, like, and that's the place to start if you're going to, you know what I mean? Like, is it rebelling? Is it just tidying up a bit? As, you know no, for real. Mean, like, Everything he's saying is true. It's like, yo, the earth is going to correct itself. There's nothing we have to do. Trust me. The earth is going to correct itself. Yeah. And the earth is going to get rid of every single virus that's it. that is causing it problems. Dinosaurs were cool. They got annoying. Earth gets rid of it. Humans are next. Okay, maybe That's we're right. next. Humans are next. But until then, ball. Fuck it, we ball. We ball, man. <laughs> you just got your PPP loan. You know you're going to jail. Enjoy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all it is. Have some fun, guys. Oh, my nah. God, man. Chris, I, unless you got some better options, I'm not <laughs> against saying. that, bro. We're balling, bro. We should learn about history. We should learn about these things. Oh, none Lord. of that shit, I can't believe none of that shit really works. Like, they got mad at fucking Kylie Jenner because she took a 13-minute jet ride and it was like, her private jet is ruining the climate. Really? Ky- Kylie's 13-minute private Come jet on, ride. Bro. You know how many private jets took off on that day, I'm sure? Yeah. You know how many regular commercial flights took off that day, I'm sure? Like, what are we talking about? Like, we're always just looking for individuals to blame when collectively, we have failed. We, this is a group assignment. We failed. I don't think we failed. You're not paying attention to the fucking the quiz. Exactly. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm not even taking a quiz. So I can't fail. You're taking that quiz? <laughs> I, I, I'm bailing out, baby. It's okay. Oh, Just saying. Life. Well, great. Summer 85. Okay. So go Audible, check out the Summer 85. It's the Audible original. Go get it on Audible right now. Narrated. Fictional story like never Kevin happened. Hart. So it's just <laughs> it's much easier to enjoy like that from the creative genius of Charlotte and the Cod. So that's Chris. That's all Chris, Chris Morrow. You know, shout out Tara Kevin Thomas Hart. and Nicole Shelton too. Who, also then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always Nicole. Salute yeah. to Nicole. Salute to Tara. But do you think there's any solutions, Chris, seriously? To to climate change? To everything. This would some, Something broad. Give us. Yeah. I mean, there's always a solution. The question is, do we do it the easier way, which is start working towards it now, or do you wait until people are dropping dead all across the globe and then there's this mad scramble? I mean, it's kind of like... That's when we wait. Yo, that's, saw, what, that's what will happen. Bro, and, I just saw 300 cows die. Right. All of them at the same time, simultaneously, bomb, beef, everywhere. 
With, with, did somebody use the beef for something? They should. I, I don't. I'm, it's, but it's three hundred cows. It was heat, right? Yeah, I saw it's, that. They said it was heat stroke. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, yo. You're not built for this. If anybody wants to read, you're not built for this. Like, you're supposed to be an outdoor animal. Right. Like, you outside. <laughs> you outside. Know I mean? You outside. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> the cows on the Chick Fil A commercial. Like, we, we outside. outside. <laughs> now you're dead. Nah. Shit. So, like, yeah. What's the book, Chris? Ministry of the Future. You know what's horrible for the environment? What? Cow farts. Worse. Yeah, absolutely worse, true. More methane in cow farts than there are in like car exhaust. Cow so, farts. Yeah. So yeah. that's the uh, that's the world correcting itself. Three hundred nah. less cows. Really? Factory factory farming is is a very big part of yep. climate change. Why sure. cow farts? They have so much methane, right? Yep. Yeah. More methane than a car exhaust. Oh, we got to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger farts before we get out of here, though. The oh, are you when, hear about that when he was playing cute? What? That, when he was just playing cute with that girl. Oh, and he farted on her? Yeah. Oh, we'll talk about it. But, <laughs> like, what was we talking about? Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, before that. I don't even like Cow saying farts. that word, to be honest with you, dude. Jesus. I felt really right. weird. It felt you're really saying terminator, bro. You're say what? You're I'm saying, saying terminator. <laughs> I got, yeah. the, uh, the funniest shit is, when I was in college, this would have been 93, Dick Gregory came and spoke at my college, and he said that Cal's farting was, like, one of the major causes of going to be of climate change and people literally laughed him you know out of the out of the auditorium the goat he was on he was on point he had i think there's actually is there a dick gregory doc coming out it's that's already some, out it's is it Showtime. already out i need yeah, to check yeah, yeah. that out he's Showtime. he's an interesting dude for that's sure my god that, was, that's, that yeah. was the longest breakfast club interview in history dick oh you gregory. interviewed him i didn't see that yeah dick gregory wow. was on breakfast club for like an hour and 45 minutes wow I, he what oh i think somebody might have beat him but he he he, he was up there but make sure y'all get uh summer eighty five man. Um, yeah, thank you to SBH, thank you to Audible, Kevin, Charlemagne. This this uh five hours of audio is a lot. You know what I mean? There's a lot scripted. of a lot of work going into this. Um, but people seem excited about it, so I hope uh, people check future. it out. Yeah. I listen to so I'm much listening. audio scripted stuff now. Like I listen to so much. I, I watch a lot of documentaries now, and I listen to a lot of audio scripted stuff. And to your point, Chris, it's like. You know, history just keeps repeating itself. Mm. Right. You know, like nothing has changed. Like I, I, I was watching, like I tell you about the Barack Obama doc. It's like you watch Barack Obama doc. It's like every single same problem yep. that exists now existed then, and Exa it existed ex during Clinton, and existed so, during Reagan. So like, what do you? So what do we do? Ball. <laughs> <laughs> that right? Fuck if it, it doesn't change, it, why are we ball, complaining man. about it? Fuck it. Who are we? Enjoy. Who are we, bro? Enjoy. What would Duval do? That's what I say. I'm going, man, I'm going back to Jesus. I rock with Duval too, but yeah. what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus said, just wait till I come back. Jesus is like, <laughs> nah, but he'd make a whole hullabaloo about everything. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, running into the fucking temples and shit and flipping tables and be too I much. Got, Jesus like, I got to get y'all attention. Nobody yeah. would pay Jesus no attention right now, though. Duval would be watching Jesus like, oh, this guy's too much. What if Jesus is under the Sesame Street? What if Jesus was. <laughs> He's, no, serious. What if he takes the mask off and it's Jesus? He just wanted to get y'all attention. Oh, wow. Whoa. And what if he knew something about them girls? He knew what they were about up. to grow up into. <laughs> he knew what they were going to grow up to do. Shut Yo, up, you know, if it's Jesus, Jesus knows. Oh, let's Should pay, we pay some bills? Let's pay some bills, man. Thank you to On It, man. Uh, you know those times when you're so into what you're doing that you can't think about anything else. The times when you're at your most focused and productive. Psychologists call that feeling of being in the zone, flow state, and alpha brain, okay? And guess what? On it is the ultimate way to get there. A world-renowned <clears throat> nootropic supplement with over 1 million bottles sold, alpha brain promotes cognitive functions, including memory, mental speed, and focus. It can help you remember names, zero in on complex tasks, and think more clearly under stress, okay? Uh, salute to Joe Rogan, man, the GOAT, all right? Joe Rogan says that he feels it helps him form better sentences when he's talking. There's somebody out there right now saying, Joe, you need to take more of it. I okay? might need some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I want some too. Uh, alpha brain contains amino acids and plant compounds that promote the brain's release of alpha waves, which are associated with greater creativity and productivity. At the same time, it supports neurotransmitters and chemicals that relay information to and from the brain, okay? If coffee and energy drinks make you jittery, you can rest easy knowing that alpha brain is caffeine free. But <clears throat> if for any reason you don't like alpha brain, you can get your money back. Just give us two weeks. If at that point you don't feel like alpha brain is a fit for you, just tell us why and we'll refund your money on the spot. No return necessary. Save 10% on your order by going to onit.com slash idiots or swing by your local Walmart and pick up some today. 
That's O-N-N-I-T dot com slash idiots. And speaking of cognitive, man, issues, talk space. Oh, man, got a smooth talk space, man. When they say mental health is a journey, believe me, it's true. That's why it's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day. When you work on yourself, it brings positive changes in all areas of your life. Trust me, I know. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you a more positive outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. Y'all hear me all the time tell y'all that y'all have to invest in your mental wealth. I am, man, I am a big, 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 big believer of therapy. If I hadn't started, if I didn't start going to therapy in 2016, I don't know if I would have even gotten to this point. Damn sure I don't think I would have made it, um, through, 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 through 2020. So I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. Even, even when people ask me, like, you know, how do you start your healing journey? I always say therapy has to be your gateway. Therapy mm-hmm. is not the only way. Right. And, you know, it's not, it's not the end all be all. But I think that just being able to sit down, explain to somebody what you're going through, get the language for it, get a better understanding of it, know that you know, you're not, a, you're not alone. It's okay that, to talk about it. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to not be okay. Like, right. I don't, like, hey, like, there's nobody on this planet that has everything all figured out, man. True. And the longer you live, you realize the less you know and the more confused you get about life. So that's why I think therapy is important, man. You can sign up online and start therapy the same day as you sign up. You can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist. So it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform 24-7. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times and be a guiding light, okay? Best of all, Talkspace is secure and private using the latest in-the-end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of this podcast, The Brilliant Idiots, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code IDIOTS to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's IDIOTS and Talkspace.com. Let's get back to the show. Real quick, since we was talking about healing, man, uh, I just want to say Saturday, July 30th, 12 p.m., Mount Moriah Church in North Charleston, South Carolina. My guy, Jay Barnett. Jay Barnett has this fantastic program called the Just Heal Bro uh, program. And he does this Just Heal tour. Uh, him and Lawrence Rucker and Joel Tudman and Lawrence Aja. And basically, man, they just, you know, Jay, Jay is a licensed mental health therapist. Uh, Joel is a, is, a, is a life coach and teacher. Lamont is a mental health advocate. Lawrence is a relational intelligence expert. And they just go to different cities, man. And they really just invite you know, men to come out, especially black men. And they just pour into them. You know, they just pour into them. A lot of people want to go to therapy. They, they want to sit down and talk to somebody. They just don't know where to begin. So Saturday, July 30th, 12 p.m., Mount Moriah, the Just Hill Tour will be there. Brought to you by my foundation, the Mental Wealth Alliance. Okay? Okay. Now let's talk about a couple more things before we get out of here, man. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I really don't know what happened. Was this a sexual thing? Or why did he fart on this woman? And why is this woman talking about it? Now? Yeah, I don't know. Can you can you play a little of the clip, Taylor? Schwarzenegger didn't care for him. Schwarzenegger didn't care for him. What was not good about Big Arnold? Uh, he's a, a bit too full of himself. I, I don't care for him at all. He's a Republican, which I don't like. And he was actually quite rude. He farted in my face. He did it deliberately right in my face. Where where, and when did this happen? It was during the filming of End of Days in Los Angeles. And I was playing Satan's sister. And he was killing me. So he had me in a, in a position where I couldn't escape, uh, lying on the floor. And he just <laughs> farted. <laughs> I haven't forgiven him for it. <laughs> you can't, because it, it might not have been intentional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You wrestling and shit, you acting, and my, you might have let one slip. Nah, he farted on her face. You think he did it on purpose? Yeah, he did it on purpose. Really? Yeah. That's fire. You think he let it rip and was like, from the box? You really? 
Like, you really think he did it on purpose, yo? I think he did it on nah. purpose. Nah. Yeah, I think he did it on purpose, man. I love the fact that everybody's getting old and not giving a fuck. Yeah. But nobody's protecting any relationships. Nobody just telling us all these real stories yeah. about what happened. I don't believe he had farted in her face on purpose. I think he farted in her face. Really? I think it's also funny. And I do, yeah, it's funny. That's funny. Oh, look at her. Who is that? I don't know. Why does she care? Is that Roseanne? Dude. That's not Roseanne? Who That's is that? That's a compliment, bro. Who? Dude, that's a bottle. You know who that is, Chris? Fucking class no That looks like Roseanne Barr to me, bro. That looks like. What's her name? Pull up what's, her name. What's the other guy's name? Miriam? No, the DA Bar. The what's DA it? Bar. DA got that. No, 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 no. The district attorney Bar. Oh, ro- oh, yes. He does look like fucking um. What's what's William Barr? William Barr. Yeah, that's not she Roseanne does look Barr. Like that's William Bar. 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 Miriam Margalows. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't believe. I I personally don't believe Arnold Schwarzenegger farted in her face. Yeah, that's William Barr, dude. Um, per- <laughs> that's William Barr. That's, he, he, she looks like a mix of William Barr and Roseanne Barr, bro. Yeah. She kind of built like a bar, too. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> you don't think she ever farted on somebody? Like, when you look at it, you don't think she ever. She like I don't she like her being right that now. old, judging people about farting. Yeah. Harry she was Harry, she Potter? Harry Potter. Who's she playing Harry Potter? Look that up. Nah, bro. She wasn't in no Harry Potter. She farts. Look at that body. Bro, uh, uh, yeah, she, she farts unintentionally. Yeah, it just comes out. Jesus Christ. God bless her, man. I mean, God yeah. bless her. Now, Sarah, I asked you earlier, <laughs> did you feel like, because, uh, like, you know, your you special sold three times. Yeah. You know the amount. Chris, summer 85 is out. You know, people hear things. They're like, oh, Chris got a project out on, on with Audible. You know what I mean? It's about Philly, Kevin Hart. Are family members in your pockets? Me? Yeah. No. Really? No. You don't have those problems? No, not you didn't yet. See, did you see, speaking of Kevin, you didn't see Kevin with Jay-Z and what Jay-Z was saying about how, you know, he goes home for Thanksgiving, he just wants peace of mind, and, you know, play the clip, Taylor. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on, Taylor. You know the segues. You know the vibes. You got to go home for Thanksgiving, and people are talking to you like Kevin Hart. And you going home for solace. You want family. You're going home for peace of mind. You're going home for peace of mind. And they don't give you that your because you're not, is, you're not. Your that. cousin's in your grandma's living room saying, yo, man, I got this, uh, I got this play. I want to, if you just give me, you know what I mean? <laughs> 4,800, I could make you 2 million. You yeah. like, it don't work like yeah. that, family. You got to explain to him, like, life isn't like that. Yeah. So y'all don't get that? No. Really? No. You're not, not going to tell me it's just a black thing, bro. My parents I, still try to give me that. money. Huh? My parents are still trying to give me money. Really? You know, like a hundred dollars. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with a hundred dollars? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> they're parents. Yeah, they it's just like, they don't want to stop parenting, probably. But let let me ask you this. No. What's the right way for a family member to, to ask, ask for, money? for money? Well, that, that's a great question. I listen. I don't have any. I don't have a problem with anybody asking. Right. Um, because it's a blessing to be a blessing, but also that's what the word no is for. But I think to Jay Z's point, just be realistic. Yeah. You know, don't hit me with the, yo, fam, let me get 10K till Friday. <laughs> you yeah. know, you never had 10K in your life. Right. Yeah. So you're not I'm going to give it to you it now. Back. Yeah. How you going to get it back to me by Friday? And guess what? If you're getting it on Friday, why can't you just wait till Friday? Yeah. yeah. You know, so my, just be realistic. Like, you know, you can't ask me for a thousand dollars in an investment and I can get you back a half a million, whatever it is. Like, yeah. just be realistic. So just. Also, don't ask. Don't ask for money that you're going to use to do illegal shit with. Oh, please. Because now I'm tied to the illegal shit. Yeah, yeah, please don't. Please don't. Please don't do that. Please don't. I mean, listen, I don't have no problem with anybody asking. You can ask any way you want. Only thing I would tell you is make it realistic because all I can say is no, right? Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, it's just that simple. Like, and if you don't respect the the no, then that person never really fucked with you. He just really fucked with what you could do for him Mm. or her. You know what I mean? That's all. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. Is it better to not even try to frame it as a loan and just be like straight up like, look. That's I how I look have, at it. Can I just have 10? That's right. That's it. No, I'm not. First of all, I'm not giving you 10,000. Yeah. What's like, the max? Five? I, uh, it depends what it's for. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it honestly depends what it's for. Right. If it's for your kid's school, well, they don't need it next year too. I'm not paying for your kids to go to school. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I've done that. I've done, I've done that. You know what I mean? But it, I've done that for people who I know are in like, really, really bad shape. And I'm doing it for the kids. And I've gotten got like that. I've had, you know, people tell me it's for the kids and I'm giving it to them, but they got 
a drug problem. Mm. And I didn't know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Until you hear from somebody, you hear from somebody else in the family, like, wait a minute, you did what? And that person just asked us for X, Y, and Z. Like, no, that person's on dope or whatever. Like, I've had that happen. Mm. But it's just like, you can't, um, you can't let any of those bad experiences keep you from being a blessing. You just got to use discernment. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. That I is a tricky. You're not getting asked for money, bro. I don't know. I'm very like generous with at least my family, like my immediate family. I gotta I, tell people how much you pay for the specials, and then they can do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> this don't make no sense. Some long lost cousins, <laughs> might, uh, I mean, you're putting bugs in their up. ear right now, so they're right. probably gonna fucking. You got Schultz's out there, right? I met one. Salute to Tessa Schultz. Shout Tessa, out Tessa. Tessa, Tessa, I don't know if you let Tessa since you gonna start listening to brilliant idiots. Salute to Tessa. Tessa works at uh, the Gilliard Center in Charleston, South Carolina. I asked Ooh. if she was related to Andrew Schultz. You know what I mean? Because Tessa hit me with the. This is I'm going to tell a story. I, Tessa, funny. salute to you, Tessa. And I'm talking to Tessa. Tessa is a a, a, a woman in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. She works at the Gilead Center. She's Caucasian. I only know one other Tessa from Charleston. That's Tessa Spencer. Salute to Tessa Spencer. I love Tessa. Tessa's the first person to tell me I sound good on the radio. Inspired the hell out of me. Still a great friend of mine. Um, and so I'm talking to her about her first name. And then I see her last name is Schultz. So I go, oh. And she's, you know, told me she's from New York. So I go, do you know Andrew Schultz? She goes, Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz. She sits down. She sits down next to me. And she goes, what do you think of Andrew Schultz? And I go, what do you mean? That's a broad question. Like, what do you mean what I think of Andrew Schultz? She was like, ah, I want to. I want to bring him here. I want to bring him, you know, to the Kill Yard Center. But they say he's offensive. <laughs> they say they say he's so offensive. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little biased. I, I, that's one of my great friends. And we've been hosting a podcast for damn near 10 years. And she goes, I go, but he's 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 great. You know, he's, he's phenomenal. He's funny. And she, and she goes, and he sells tickets. Most importantly. But I'm like, that's what it should be about. Yes. If he sells tickets. Yeah. And if there's a demand for this product. You got to bring the product. Yeah. What does the building care? The building's never hosted somebody controversial. I mean, you know what's offensive to the building? Losing money. Being mm -hmm. empty. Being empty is very <laughs> offensive. That's Not being able to pay rent is very offensive. All I'm saying is... You went through that with the Breakfast Club, man. You, all, you always tell that story. But, like, at first, it was hard for you guys to have yeah, guests. Yeah, yeah. And then it got to the point where, like, you really weren't popping if you didn't stop at the breakfast club yeah, 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 when you're yeah, dropping yeah. and like because the breakfast club has the numbers that's it simple as that it's you gotta go game. where the people are that's right so uh, I would tell the Gilead Center book shows because if not somebody in Charleston is about to <laughs> price went up whoa Tessa. price of the brick went up you know what I mean yesterday's price is not today's price, price. <laughs> price. alright uh, let's do uh. some asking idiots Taylor oh man Salute to Jesus and Mero. Salute oh, to yeah. Jesus and Mero, man. Salute to my guys, Jesus and Mero. Uh, came out this week that um, Jesus and Mero are creatively going their separate ways. Um, the Showtime show is coming to an end after four seasons. Um, those are my guys. You know, that's 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 Uncommon Sense alumni. You know, we were all at MTV2 together. Mm -hmm. You know, we all, like, literally, I, I feel like we all started you know, our, our TV careers together in a real way. I mean, you know, of course, Andrew and Duval and I, we started that guy called Jesus and Meryl came kind of like in the midst of that, you know, and then that's when MTV2 started like expanding our shows. So Schultz had jobs that don't suck. And he, oh, what was the other show on MTV you hosted? It was like a game show. I had a show, dating right? show. A I, dating show. Uh, the hookup, I think it was called Jobs That Don't, jobs don't we Suck. We did Guy Court. We did Guy Court. Duval had Ain't That America. Ain't but that you know, America. My, my man Paul Ritchie, Paul Ritchie was the first person Shout that ever come to me and be like, yo, do you know Jesus and Meryl? And I, I wasn't familiar with them, you know, at the time. And he was like, man, these guys are hilarious. They, they were on Twitter and I think they were on Complex TV. And so they bought them into MTV too. And it's just like, yo, we all were in those, you know, trenches together. These Samarell used to come on Uncommon Sense every day, every every episode with, yeah. with classic or trash. Like yeah. they were, you know, regulars on the show. Um, so I, I, I love the evolution. I love the way that they came up, man. And I'm not going to front. It really bothered me. This, not, not bothered me, but it, it was an observation, right? I'm like, these Samarell have been doing great things in television. Since like 2016, right? Since yep. they, since they, un, after Uncommon Sense, they got the Vice Show, yep. then Showtime. They get so much critical acclaim. That's one thing about Jesus and Mero. I say it's like those white outlets love Jesus and Mero. Yeah, like yeah. The, 
the varieties and the bunches yeah, and the New York yeah, Mag. Like, yeah, they love yeah. Deez and Deez and gets so much critical acclaim and they the future of late night, all of this great stuff. Never see black media cover Deez and Merrill like that. Interesting. Why do you think that is? I don't know. So it bothered me this week when... Now they're covering it. When you think it's a oh, mess. Oh, wow. When you think it's a mess, when it's a breakup, yeah. all of a sudden you want to cover it. Like they covered, but, they covered the tweets. When the tweets first started, then mm, they covered the fact that, you know, the show was in there and they're splitting up. And I was mm, just like, this is what's wrong with the culture. Because these are two yeah. brothers from the Bronx. Like there is, there is New York as you can possibly be. Yeah. They, they're called the Bodega Boys. They represent blackness on a high level in these spaces. Yeah. And I never saw black media cover them the way that I saw them get covered. And do you week. think do you think that's just because like white people are better at finding talent? Like what is your man, shut up? What is what 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 do you think it is? What do you think it is? I really don't know. I never I'm gonna be honest with you, I never understood why 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 Jesus and Merrill, like why it felt like black media didn't cover them like that. I, even, I, I'll, I'll even, I don't even know what black media is right now. Well, I'm, when I say black media, I talk about like, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's not because it, it is all pop culture, but y'all know the sites I'm talking about. And I, I don't want to single anybody out. Right. It's just, you just know the difference. You, you know wanted more saying? celebration of their success. And it should have been. Right. And, you know, it is what it is. Like, I, it's, you got, just a salute to my guys. Why? Uh, yeah, that's. That's the only thing that's uh, interesting to me is like it's it's possible to do different things creatively and still work together like we've done that for a decade pretty yeah, much yeah, you know yeah. so that's why I'm curious about what happened within the relationship because you don't have to stop it it's not like that that show is like all intensive what are they, how many days a week were they doing it One once a week, a week. once I, a week I, I think our dynamic is different I, and I, even when I me and Duval used to do Hood State of the Union because we 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 didn't that's, we didn't start together per se. And we all and we do totally different. People things. don't know them separately. Yeah, and I it's like maybe they've never dated be, anybody before. Yeah, this is my high school girlfriend. You know? I can yeah, see that yeah, as yeah, potentially yeah. being suffocating because you're like, oh, I'm only known through this. Through this. But what's wrong with that though? Uh, listen, if it works, it works, baby. Like chemistry is a hard thing to get. Like like this, catching lightning in a bottle with any of these shows. Is, that's what that's what all of us need to realize about what it is that we do. Yeah. If you got a lane, yeah, and people fucking with you, and you making a living. Hold on to that, man. Hold on. Like, hold, like yeah. hold on to it until it can't be held on to no Facts. more. Facts. What, what Lil Nas said? Ride the fucking mother. What he said? Till the wheels fall Ride off. Ride until you can't no more. Oh, yeah. Oh, whatever the no fuck. Yeah. Something. Well, it's like yeah. you Something yeah. more. Yeah. I don't remember. What was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was something. So, I don't know. But yeah, man. I hear you, man. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, you got, you know, so it, it doesn't really make any sense for me to, to my pontificate. But hey, they had something that was great and it was really funny and they created great moments and they tapped into something that was super needed that people didn't feel like was represented on television or on the Internet. And it might not be over. Like, that's the other thing. Like, it's like you don't know. You, you never know what can happen in, in the future. They might 100%. go do things, create uh, separately. Yeah. Have some success. Might come back later and do something different. Just because it's not on Showtime no more, or, you know, or, you know, they're not doing the podcast. It, may, it doesn't mean that you know, it's over. Over. I would yeah. hope not. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I would right. hope it don't get to a place of malice or beef or anything like right. that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know. Salute to my guys, man. Jesus and Mero. Uh, let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. To me, can <laughs> uh, what? Uh, Ask it. <laughs> Oh, asking this is hilarious. The underscore corner says, if any of the idiots crew was made king of a nation, who would become a tyrant first? Oh, it's Taylor, without a doubt. <laughs> I was thinking, Taylor. It's not me. I don't know, show. It's not me. You could be a good tyrant, though. I just know how people will be the most happy, and I'll help them be that. <laughs> but I'm not a tyrant. You know what I mean? No, it would be Taylor. No, it'd be Taylor, no, without be a doubt. Taylor. 100%. Taylor. Taylor got that Napoleon complex. Like, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. It would definitely be Taylor. Conquering everybody. Taylor be like, in my presence, you have to walk on your knees. Right. <laughs> Taylor, like, nobody can be taller than me. Walk on your knees. <laughs> if you're shack size, crawl when you greet me. Okay? Definitely will be 100% Taylor. Taylor. Um, 100%. Jo Jojo Doe. Who do you think, Chris? Who do you think would be a tyrant for us? You've, 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 been, you've been here the whole time. I don't even really know what the difference between a king and a tyrant is. I mean, isn't... That's sort of the same thing, or is a tyrant like a bad king? I guess a bad, a bad king. king. Yeah, I would think a bad king. 
I don't know. I think everybody would do a pretty good job. I got to be honest. That's the good. You think so? That's the right answer yeah. to say. <laughs> All right. I mean, everybody's kind of a king of their own little kingdoms as it is already, right? You yeah. Know, like, it's not like anybody's really a tyrant. That's the beauty of it. Like, 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 everybody got their own little kingdom. We come right. together to form a great nation of kingdoms. Exactly. Uh, Jojo Doe underscore says, would you rather have your girl fake an orgasm every time you have sex or fake laugh at all your jokes? Well, I experienced both and uh, <laughs> they, uh, it's a, I'm happily married. So yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. trick. Yeah. Maybe fake that's it. fake it fake till you it. make it. Fake it. Fake it when you are making it. Yeah. <laughs> fake it while you make fake it. Fake it while you when you yeah. are making it. Yeah. Now the What orgasm, about you? I would I would want her to tell me about the orgasms just so we can figure it out. Cause I would I would I want real orgasms. Yeah. I want I want real orgasms and fake laughs. I'm not what? gonna lie. I'm so, but what <laughs> what <laughs> I don't. I want real orgasm to fake laugh. I don't care if the here's the thing about the laugh, right? Yeah. I don't care if the laugh is real because if the laugh is real, you're gonna laugh, right? But when the jokes don't hit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a little fake laughter, bro. Right? Like, you need a, you need a little. Give fluff. me a little something. Okay. Bro. okay, okay. But what if the orgasm, like, how fake is the orgasm? Is is she convincingly fake or is she going like <laughs> oh, orgasm? Right. Like it's just, it's just, Yo, that's a great question. You, you know what a fake like, laugh is. You yeah. don't know what a you fake orgasm is. Unless she did what I just did. Like right. cuz that would be too much. But right. would you rather the little orgasm? But that's what I'm saying. Would you rather the big hearty fake laugh like ah! <laughs> 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 or would you or would you like the little the chuckle like Yo, <laughs> you wild, what bro. If when she orgasmed, real, real orgasm, it was just her laughing. Yeah. So like she was like, ha, ha, <laughs> yo, you're a wild boy, yo, wild boy. <laughs> Listen, what if what if it's one of those orgasms where it's actually real big and real intense? And then, but you know how sometimes you laugh too long, you're like yo, it ain't that funny. Yeah, like, yo, yeah, right, right. don't feel that. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, hiya, <laughs> hiya. <laughs> right, just crazy. Oh man, scroll down, tell. Let's do this last okay. one. Okay, let's do Zeke Sosa. Zeke Sosa says, <laughs> "Your entire, if your entire field of work was measured like the NBA, who'd be your NBA player equivalent?" Mm. Ooh, fire Ooh. question, Zeke Sosa. That's interesting. I'm your trying to think. Your your Steph thing NBA. for Charlotte is very interesting, right? Dual, because he role. said he said Steph for you because somebody you, said I'm Steph. Yes, because you can play points, but you're a shooter, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was thinking I changed the game. <laughs> well, that's I was thinking big, nobody no, ever no, seen no, anything no, like no, me. That's not, that's 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 <laughs> listen, yeah, now I don't want to. I don't. <laughs> Come on, so, give me more. No, I like it. No, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is hilarious. You get the Steph compliment. And you're like, but also the other part, like, hey, but also the part that y'all didn't say about me. The, the other, <laughs> like, agreed. And, and, and he loves his wife. Right. He loves his wife, bro. Okay, my wife can cook. You hear me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. And he's a goddamn champion. Yes. All right. Yes. I love it. Steph, I'll go with Steph since y'all said it. Since y'all said it. <laughs> <laughs> if you insist. If you insist, I'll go with Steph. This guy's a maniac, bro. <laughs> this guy's a maniac. Immediately said, oh, I thought it was because I changed the game. Oh, I can see it from your side, though. I can see why you guys would think oh, I am that guy. Man, <laughs> but he said in my field. Yes. In my field. Yes. I'm talking, ra I, I'm going to just say radio. I'm not even going to say media, just radio. Yes. Because yes. me, radio is the, 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 the tree that bears all fruit. Yes. So for me, it's radio. Yes. So, yes. You know, I think if, I, I, maybe, I, I look at stuff as top five. You know, it's funny. I'm such a maniac as well. I was also thinking, about me as who I I was thinking if there is a comparison I was thinking Steph because the way that I did stand up like with putting it out online and social media and that that is the way the game is played now by the next generation True. and the way that Steph changed basketball mm. that is the way that 
the next generation. See, but I was going to give you AI. Me too. For the same reason. Oh, same AI. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Okay, talk to yeah, me about me that. Too. I like that one. I <laughs> me too. I was going to say me too. It was oh, all out. And I, the, 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 the only reason talk I wasn't going to give you AI is because AI don't have no rings. But I always say AI is the only player that doesn't have rings who still feels like a champion. Ooh. It's something about AI that was bigger than a championship. He was the people's champion. He was the people's fucking champion. Oh, keep going. It's Alan <laughs> Robinson, bro. Yeah, we got to compliment each other He doesn't have to be more. anywhere now. Is this okay, what it's like to be times, like in right. a friend uh, group with women? Because <laughs> <laughs> if this one is like, I want lady friends, bro. This, tell me why I'm AI. Tell me why I'm AI, bro. Because this is fire. Allen Robinson played by his own rules. Right? He, was, he was a rebel. Right. But he was a rebel with a cause. And he actually did change the NBA. Not only the did he, rules. Ch- he change the rules, the NBA had to change to adjust to the AIs of the world. Because I mean, at first they tried to fight against it with the dress codes and everything yeah, that's else. Right. And then they was like, no, culture has shifted, bro. We either going to get down or lay the fuck down. And that's what happened. That's that. Uh, you're 100 percent. I will take that. 100 percent. I will take that. That's fire. Who's All Chris? right. What's good? Ca- Anthony Davis. <laughs> wait, wait, why? Always what? hurt. Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> injured. He's injured. But great, phenomenal Hall of Famer, no <laughs> doubt. But we can never see him on the court long <laughs> enough. <laughs> we, can never, we can never see him on the court long enough to play. Okay? Yo. Um, either, either Anthony Davis or... <laughs> say it, say it. Magic Johnson, Don't do me like that. Don't do me like Magic that. Johnson. <laughs> Don't do me Magic. like that. He's sick, but he not. <laughs> He's gonna make it. <laughs> He's got an illness for the rest of his life, but it can't take him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, if, if you think, oh, uh, take us out of here, Charlotte. Oh if you think my we're God, fucking... man. Yes, man. Listen, Summer 85 is out right now. Yes. Make sure you go get that on Audible. <laughs> Make sure you get your tickets for the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Make sure you get the infamous stand-up special on theandrewschultz.com. And as always, if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you just think we're a couple idiots who don't know shit and one of us may be sick, you're right too. <laughs> it's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.